This is a HeadGum Podcast. Social media, rideshare, delivery apps, salad? San Francisco is home to many of the tech companies that have transformed daily life in the 21st century. Most of them founded by terrifying uncanny valley utilitarians and or coked up canceled shitheads. But among the Grams and the Lifts and the Yelps is another recently founded company with the intentionally misspelled brand name that has come to signal innovation. A fast casual salad outlet founded in 2005 by fine dining veteran Andrew Swallow. Fortunately for Swallow, health conscious San Franciscans would themselves swallow the company's veggie heavy chef curated creations. After success in the Bay in 2012, the founders set their sights on national expansion and opened outlets in the Southland. Always a challenge with NorCal skeptical SoCal surfer dudes, as well as neighboring Arizona and recent California expat Mecca, Texas. And much like its baymate Facebook, as its brand grew in success, it dropped the the. In this case, the trailing greens after its four-letter moniker. Today, with 14 restaurants in three states, this bread-averse bowl broker continues to surge in popularity with city dwellers who will pay a premium for farm-fresh produce. But it remains to be seen if the salad startup can reach the near ubiquity of similar concepts like sweet green, or for that matter, the tech companies it shares a home with in the foggy apple. This week on Doughboys, Mixed. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, Jack in the Boxers, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. Jack in the... Oh, okay. That's from Alan B., who writes, Mitch having jack-off boxers in his mom's house is classic Mitch. Roastspoonman at gmail.com. It's cla- that's classic it's Mitch. classic Mitch. The guy's name is Swallow? Yeah, his name is Andrew Swallow. Andrew Swallow. Andrew Swallow. Going by the restaurant, maybe change it to spit. <laughs> Look ahead of it. Um, uh, sure, but it's very funny. The food man's name is Swallow. It's- I agree. It's extremely funny, which is yeah. why I referenced that in the intro. Um, all right. His name that- is his name is Swallow. It's like it's oh. like being a plumber named Plumber or I- a plumber named Pipe. <laughs> I want to address something up top. I have a pillow on my lap. Uh huh. It looks like I'm a middle schooler hiding his boner, <laughs> but it's just as comfortable. And I, 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 I figure that like I bought my mic. I figured it's nice to it's nice to rest my hands on it. Yeah, why not? Make yourself at home. Also, I look fucking fat. I just want to hide behind the. It sucks. I feel. I told. I was saying to press. We're recording before the holiday. Wags. Can I? Yeah. This is in. This is episodes coming out in January. Mm-hmm. But recording. Mm-hmm. This is part of our our Christmas uh, pre Christmas binge of recordings. I'm like. I'm like post Christmas wait going mm-hmm. into christmas which mm, i'm saying boy. is that's scary yeah uh anyway but well, you need your strength to steer the sleigh <laughs> <laughs> gotta eat up i want to give a shout out a shout out i want to say rest in peace to a family member uh tysto tysto mackey passed away 90 years old great guy wow great guy r.i.p accomplished accomplished life great awesome dude rest in peace to tysto r.i.p yeah uh anyway nick I have an idea. Okay, great. Okay, tell me what you think of this. By the way, you mentioned you, that you referenced the pillow you have on your lap. That is because we are back in studio, and we are at minimum rolling video on this. That's right. Will we release the video TBD? But I am we're still see. torn on it. Here's here, here's my idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a delivery app called Hot Bag. What do you think of this? You can choose to have it delivered in a hot bag. You, see, you know what I'm, you get what I'm saying here? Like the bag is insulated. The bag is hot. Yeah, it's like a heating bag. So is so like the thing that they deliver pizzas in. Yeah. Don't they do that already? I mean, like Domino's does it, but like the whole thing is called hot bag. But then here's the thing. Yeah. You can switch it to cold bag if you if you uh, if you have something cold to get delivered. Yeah, like a a salad or or, or an ice cream or something. Ice cold, cream, sushi. You, there's a button in there. You push cold bag. The bag is cold. What if you're getting, like, let's say, like, okay, I'm kind of getting, you know, a, 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 I'm, I'm ordering from a Japanese place, and I got some, I got some miso soup coming, but I'm, I also got, you know, some, some tuna rolls. I'm glad you said that. You know yeah. what? Third option: hot bag, cold bag. <laughs> yeah, both. The hot goes in the hot. Uh-huh. The cold goes in the cold. My question is, why does the user need to choose the option? Like, can't that just be like, can't they just figure out that hot stuff goes in the hot bag? 
on their own. I think that it's fun that the user gets to turn it on or off. Maybe turning it on maybe costs a little bit or something. I don't know. Mm. I think if it's an upcharge, then people are just like, why do I use this over other delivery apps? Because like, other delivery the apps don't ecosystem. have the hot bag. That's the point. Yeah, it could work. I don't know if I call it hot bag. Why not? Sounds kind of gross. All right. All right. Sure. Hot bag, cold bag. I just I don't know if I'd I'd make bag part of it. <laughs> I do like I do like the idea of a of like an advancement in delivery yes. technology. That's that would what be this great. is all about. By the way, someone on online was like when we were talking about separate the the Mick DLT. Yes. Where it's like you separate the hot from the hot. Jason right. Alexander is in the commercial, and the cold from the cold. And people were like, I think that was actually the Arch Deluxe. No, it no, wasn't. No, it wasn't. The Arch you Deluxe is a different idiot. sandwich. No, what are you wasn't. talking about? Yeah, no. That was their attempt at like a grown-up sandwich. Yes. That came later. It ca- came as one piece, one unit. It wasn't Stop. multiple boxes. Stop it. And also, Toasting White existed. People, people were like, Toasting White didn't exist. I didn't make up a bread. I think if you're going to come and correct someone online, make sure... You're right. Yeah. Like, like that's like a, if you if you come at the king, if you come for the doughboys, you better come correct. Exactly. Yes. Saying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Best not miss. <laughs> Anyways, Wags, howdy ho to Spoon Nation. We have a friend in here. We sure do. We have a fr- we have a friend recording, and I'm still kind of embarrassed doing the Heidi Ho. Maybe because we're in person again. Well, also Rochelle also, is here, who we're yeah. We're, okay, we're, that's fair. We don't know super well. She's recording with us. Does not like the podcast no. so far. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, howdy ho to Spoon Nation. Here's a, Emma, hit him with a little drop. The drop comes in from across the country. My Billboard chart number one song. Are you ready, Wags? Oh, I'm extremely ready. Hold on to your butt. Looking like shit. Feeling like shit. Feeling like shit. Why is that? Like shit. Wow. Looking like shit. Oh, wow. Looking like, feeling like, looking like, feeling like shit. Right. All night long. Everything I put out has been a hit, but I feel like shit. I liked the flip. I took one chip. I bit my lip. I want to eat my shit. I feel so sick. Oh, yeah! Feel so sick. Feel so sick. Sick of it. My stomach hurts. My bottom hurts. My throat. My throat. My throat hurts. I do not feel good. I feel bad. (laughs) All the time. Oh, shit. Is it because of the podcast? Yeah, yeah! We'll never know. And you know what? I can't do this shit. This fucking sucks. This sucks. I quit. Money in the bank. <laughs> That's kind of a good... I don't think you have to listen to the podcast if you just listen to that song. Yeah, basically. <laughs> kind of covers everything. all of it. Could he, if, he, if, he'd done, if he'd made it after this uh, episode, could have thrown in some hot bags. You're laughing at that? <laughs> it's the only thing Rochelle's like so far. <laughs> that was beautiful. It's 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 a weird thing where I'm like, I said all that stuff, but then yeah. when someone's playing it back to me, it's like insulting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's no, like, I get it. It's like uh like, hey, remember you said this stuff? I'm like, yeah, but like you shouldn't you shouldn't do that. They're you know saying what I mean? you're they're saying you're like a dumb idiot who says shit like that all the time. <laughs> I don't know if that was implied. Like, look at this heavily. fucking moron. So he's saying stupid shit. Says it so frequently, I can string it together into a supercut to rhythm. Hi, everyone. I don't have anything to say about this drop except that it was a lot of fun to make. Chris Finkey, pronounced Finn Key. He always puts that in parentheses, even though we know him now. Mm. Uh, he's the Drop Prince. Is that what we called him? I can't remember what his title is. I don't know, drop whatever. Baron? I think it was Drop Prince. Um, drop Prince. P.S. Sometimes you say that you think the podcast is bad. I disagree. It is actually very good. Wow. How about that? Thanks, Finky. That's nice. Thank you, Finky. I mean, disagree. Wrong. Yeah, he's wrong. But you know what, Wags? You know, look, we, we had a, a, a fight at the end of the year on the Evan Susser episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. You know why the podcast has lasted even, even through all of this? Why is that? We care about each other. We do care about each other. That's true. We're not like these other podcast hosts who fucking hate each other. No, we don't actually hate each other. We like each other. I do other. care about you. Yeah, I care about you, it's too. It's the truth. Mitch, I love you. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Mitch is my friend and I love him. I wish we weren't in person. Uh, I love you too, Wags. Wow. That is the truth. We care about each other. We fight a lot. 
both very frustrating men in different ways. Mm. Um, a big truck cut me off on the way here. Oh my god! Um, and it had a wreath on, the, like it was like this huge truck, and it had a little wreath on the front of the thing, which yeah. I thought was funny. That it's like I'm a like I'm a big asshole, but I love Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny to me. Uh, we got to introduce our guest. We sure do. Very, very excited to have him in studio. A writer, director, and actor from SNL and The Tonight Show and his podcast, Mama Needs a Movie, Ryan Perez is back. Hi, Ryan. Hey, guys. This is We're back in the studio. Back in the studio. I'm back looking right studio. at you. This is like 3D. <laughs> it, it's like 3D. It's, it's like the way of, of water. Yeah, it's like the way of Family water. Family is your fortress. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are a family. We're all here. Great. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> uh, Prez, thank you so much for, for coming back on the show. It's been too long. In fact, we were looking up when your last appearance was, and this was, uh, we had an episode that has now become infamous, uh, because recently, it, mm. we're recording in December, uh, this episode's coming out in the new year, but but on a recent December episode, Mitch and I talked about Christmas cookies, mm -hmm. and we both kind of settled on, well, maybe Christmas isn't like much of, isn't like a cookie holiday. And then we eventually came around to like, I guess it is by default, but it's like, I don't think a Christmas cookie is a big thing. But we had done an episode together on the Doughboys Double, the 12 days of Christmas cookies with you as our guest. Yes. I'm curious your thoughts. Do you think of Christmas as a cookie holiday? Well, first of all, I'm surprised this is the controversy that emerged from that episode because yeah. we also talked about Christmas movies. So I guess no one, no one cares about that. They don't give but a shit. The <laughs> <laughs> but the Christmas cookies, uh, fucking, is it a, I guess it's more of a cookie Fucking goblins who listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the cookie, uh, is it a cookie holiday? It's more of a cookie holiday, let's say, than Halloween. Yeah, 100%. Like, uh, like when people, when you ever, you're at a Halloween party and someone brings out a tray of little cookies, you're like, what the fuck, what, what the fuck is this? <laughs> but uh, as a uh, Christmas uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's as much, I, I guess it's, that's probably the most appropriate thing on Christmas, right? More so than a cake. I guess. Or a pie. I, I mean, Maybe I do think pie. of pie though. Yeah. Like, I, I, I guess I was, there are always Christmas, there are designated Christmas cookies mm. and people bake cookies around the holiday. I just And then people are like, you leave cookies out for Santa. Yeah, I get But you also that. leave carrots out for Rudolph and you don't consider Christmas a carrot holiday. Does that, does that translate? I think they're going to be mad about that. <laughs> I'll say this, it's probably <laughs> it's holiday. probably as much it's probably either a candy holiday or a cookie holiday. Yeah. And because Halloween is the candy holiday, let's call it a cookie holiday. I Why think not? so. I think that's what we kind of yeah. came yeah. around to it's a yeah. cookie holiday we by were default. Wrong. But we were we were wrong. We it's were fine. Wrong on it, but you know. But I think people came out of this a little too hot. Yeah. They were mad. they were mad. They need to go in the hot bag. <laughs> <laughs> or the cold bag as, as, it, as it were. They belong in the cold bag. I also bag. have an idea for this idea uh, uh, is uh, or uh, a pitch on this is make it like a yonder thing. Like when you go see you, uh, like a like a, a an Aziz show or something, sure. and they make you put the cell phone in the bag. You I, know? I, I like. <laughs> I love this idea. Yeah, and you got to you got to like solve a riddle or something to get your food out. I, you know? I, yeah, oh, wow. It, yeah. This is why. I mean, this is why. I mean, that's fun. Yeah. This is why he's Perez. And, mm -hmm. Um, I thought. I, th I also thought you were about to say you're gonna go see a Kanye show. Or oh, exactly. <laughs> well, there they make him put the phone in the bag. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Ryan, you have a podcast, Mama Needs a Movie, mm -hmm. and- It would be very tricky to go to Kanye concert now, huh? I don't think you'd get away with it. I think you'd get in trouble. Yeah. Someone would see you there and be like, what are you doing? Why are you Me specifically, you're saying, or- Are anyone? you thinking of doing it? <laughs> no, I'm just saying- I'm, I went and it was scenario. fine. Nobody- <laughs> <laughs> And he rocked, man. He freaking rocked. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye, he's cool. He's eccentric, but oh, he still got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you separate the art from the artist. I mean, I don't, but you can do that. Yeah, sure. sure. As, uh, Perez, you have this podcast, Mama Needs a Movie. Mm -hmm. And I think it's appropriate that you have a, a film podcast because I, I think I've told you this before. You have the best taste in cinema of anyone I know. Oh, thanks, You have man. such a comprehensive knowledge of all, all of film. Uh, you, you have really good things. Like, like you, you, you like amazing things. You're always watching amazing things to the point where when you, we disagree on something, I feel stupid. Yeah, we like said I'm this like before. I'm probably wrong. If we, Perez, I mean, we, I'm saying we've said this, we've said this thing to each other. Like yeah. if Perez likes something or dislikes something, and I feel the opposite, I probably am incorrect. Yeah, you never want to see. I never want to sneak on over to your letterbox and see, uh, see like a, a movie I loved, and then like Perez giving it two stars or right. a star and a half, oh, or God. worse yeah. yet, 
I think in the general, dreaded no rating. <laughs> <laughs> I think in general, in life, you don't want to be going on Letterbox if you value your life and time. And <laughs> the idea that you only get one, uh, right. the Letterbox is not a place to spend time. But yeah, uh, no rating though is something I only give. I give that to every new movie, and mm. for that's for a very specific reason, which is that when you start to know people that make movies, there's no yes. proper way to give ratings. Yes, you can't, yes, yeah. You can't. I can't. Ha- I can't give one friend's movie four and another five i can't then i can't give every friend's movie five because that's just not true right i, I would know. appreciate if you gave tomorrow war five just for you though just for you because i like you <laughs> yes yeah, so and i also thought it was a genuine five-star film <laughs> There, there. yes I, I i never i never like to and then when i dis and then when i do disagree with you i'm like what's going on i'm like what is, what happened with per- like maybe a Maybe he wasn't feeling well during. Like, like yeah. I try to, I try to figure out what was was. But in the in reality, probably you just a better taste in movies. No more about movies. You right. know, here's the thing: is like also, as far as our, our crew of people that we that we are friends with, Nick associate with. Maybe yes. you would say, yeah. um, basically the three of us plus Koala. <laughs> the three of us plus Koala. Yeah. Um, you got Bug Main, who's sure. on the podcast is crazy. Knows a ton about film. He really does. Like, a, like a, we know a people who know a lot about film, and I still would say you're uh, Perez. You're 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 up there as a guy who knows more than than anyone that I that I know. Right. Oh, um, I don't know about that, but do, do you? Have, do I'll you, have that reputation, sure. To give yourself a, a little self an, uh, anal- analysis, do you think? Uh, you know, like we've talked about this wags before. Mm. Like, like Ebert didn't like like big, uh, like. Fun, dumb block, like right. He didn't like like Starship Troopers, or was it Siskel? I forget which one didn't like Starship Troopers. I don't, I don't, I don't think of Ebert as have as being like that. I mean, like th- I think both of them kind of had some mainstream taste. I mean, I think they both like put did Ebert weigh less about, than us? I don't. I, I, I think mean, Ebert maybe, maybe weighed less than have. us. <laughs> oh shit! I think combined, you guys weigh more. <laughs> Significantly more than Cisco, but, but maybe, but individual, who can say? Yeah, only it'd be God funny knows. if you were like, I think you guys combined like at least two Cisco, <laughs> I mean, at least two Eberts. Um, Cisco, but Cisco and Ebert like both put like there's something about Mary on their top 10 list. Yeah, like, these yeah. are guys, they, I think they were they were pretty favorable towards mainstream cinema in my memory. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, do you, do you, but is it all right, anyways. So I'm maybe in the wrong. city, by the way, that was they Sis- in the that city. Was fa- that was Siskel's favorite. Siskel's number yeah, one of the that, year, yeah. The last but one he made before he died. Yeah, wild. Yeah. I think yeah. I was more on Siskel's when I when I watch old reviews. I think I was more on Siskel's side, but I'm mm. not. I, I mean, they both were good, obviously. Perez, do you have any? Do you have any movies that you're like, like, oh, I don't really like like this genre, or do you have any weak spots where you're like, I don't, I like, uh, I'm never gonna kind of like this. Uh, you know, do you like? I know you don't love horror, right? You're not like a huge horror. I'm not. Fan. I like horror movies. It's just not. There's so many people that are such horror. You're, you're, yes. you're you included. You're such a horror fan. And the yeah. more I go through life, I meet people that are so devoted to horror that I realize if even if I started today, it would take me years to catch up to where some people are. Yeah. And then it, certain things like martial arts, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's actually a ton of stuff. There's a lot. I have a ton of blind spots. And uh, uh, if you go, if you count all of international cinema, there's a lot, you know, out there. Yeah. That I've. Yeah, that I've not seen. Well, that means we don't know shit at all. We know way less than you do. I wonder what you're going to think of Avatar. It's the week of Avatar. This is the you know, this is and this is the the unfortunate timing of this particular record is we are pre Way of Water. This is this is this will maybe be the last episode recorded before Way of Water yeah. that will be released. Yeah, and so a couple doubles, but, the, but a couple doubles. Well, last mainline episode we're recording pre way pre experiencing Pandora uh, and. I, I wonder what we're all going to think of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm very excited for it. People also were questioning that the other day, too, of our like of Avatar, which is just in the new world. It's like every, if you like something, it's a yeah. take. And if you, right. or like, it's not even a take. It's like, you're liking this for this reason, or you're not liking a movie for the other, re- for Everyone reason. thinks it's cynical. Everyone thinks it's motivated. There's that, or, or it's bad faith. And it's just like, I don't know, people fucking like and dislike different things. Someone tweeted at me like, Mitch likes Avatar, but like, it's because he's like a cynical grump. I'm like, so I what like something. What are you talking about? The fuck and it makes me a cynical grump. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, people need to settle down. I think that the, the, <laughs> like every single movie being uh, liked or disliked, or whether it's, whether it's Tar or Avatar, hmm. but like it. Like it, whether it's Vertigo <laughs> or the new best film of all time, uh, Jean Dillman, uh, Vantois, uh, Quai de Commerce, uh, uh, Dix, 
Quatreve Bruxelles. Uh, right. Of course. You, whatever yeah. your whatever <laughs> your taste in films are, you like if you like it, like it. Yeah. Wags and I know that I as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> but Billy Crystal, are you listening? Avatar. <laughs> if you're gonna host the Oscars, be a great Mad TV sketch. <laughs> That's what you give me? A great mad TV sketch? <laughs> That's what they were always doing matchups. All right. Gump Fiction? The Triple yeah. X Files? I guess that you're That was their right. whole thing. <laughs> Babe Watch? The, inf- the Artie Lang sketch? That's good. Was he, he was dressed up as a pig? Yeah, and it was like, he has like the story he tells on, on Stern, I won't try to retell, but He was like, snorting coke like through the pig yeah, nose. Yeah, through the pig nose, yeah. Just really, just really dark. Um, Man, heady days. Mad TV. <laughs> That's some... That's some Daryl Hammond stuff for <laughs> Mad TV. <laughs> I was the most fucked up SNL cast member ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, had a, I had a phone call with him once. Lovely man. Yeah. I'm always snoring coke through a pig nose. Some people don't have a choice, Why? <laughs> Uh, so what? Okay, so like I, I do want to get to this uh, this restaurant we're we're going to mm-hmm. talk about because it's the topic of the episode. But I'm like, what? What? Looking back on 2022 in film, I know it's not over yet, but do you have like any any picks and pans, any faves? Oh, from this year, you know, I'm way behind where where I would mm. usually be right uh, at this, and maybe in the next couple of weeks I'll catch up. From this year, the one that I really liked, it's a film. You know who I saw it with. Bug Main himself. Wow. Wow. Uh, we saw the film 3,000 Years of Longing together. Oh, hell yeah. And we walked out saying that's the best film of the year. That was a fucking at, great at picture. Time. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, I liked that it. Was a, I liked it as well. I was disheartened by the um, somewhat uh, ambivalent uh, audience reaction to the movie. Because fucking it's, bombed. It's, it's a beautiful film. Gorgeous. That's great. And uh, I, re- <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen a ton. I like the Ron Howard movie 13 Lives. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good movie. It's, it's probably his best movie since Apollo 13. And I tell you, for comedy, the best comedy of the year is probably um, The Civil Dead. That was the one I really liked. Oh, that's, that was great. That's Clay Tatum and um, Whitmer Thomas yeah, and wow. the yeah, Power of Violence guys. They made a film that is just, uh, I think that film's extraordinary. I think they, so often when, if you, if you know people even a little bit that make a film, you go to it kind of dreading like, oh right. boy, is this going to not be great? Yes. And that movie, I walked out uh, in, so encouraged. Yeah. I said, I want to go make up my own film. I was because, smiling uh, walking out of that. Yeah, yeah, I don't right. know if you've seen it yet, Wags, but it's great. You should see it. It's yeah, great. I'll check it out. Um, yeah. uh, Mitch, you get adjust your little. What, it, what uh, Rochelle? What do you call this thing? The cover of the mic, the windscreen. Um, it's a technically a pop filter. A pop filter. Just your pop filter. It's coming off the mic. What are you talking about? The, the, mm. This part. Oh, oh yeah, you're this right. Yes. Um, it's, uh, sorry, I didn't know it was happening. Have, have you gone to Fable Country yet, Perez? Well, oh, have I been to the Fablemans? Yeah. Yes, yes, I've seen the Fablemans. I've seen it twice. I actually, I, I talked about that on the, this uh, show, Mama Needs a Movie, that I co-host with my, my friend, uh, Ann Riemann. We talked about that with our friend, Danny Jelinek. Wow. Uh, and uh, uh, The Fablemans is a is an odd movie. It's um, where I fell on that movie. I don't know how you guys, you saw it, right? I haven't seen it yet. Oh. I saw it. I, re- I really enjoyed it, and I came in kind of like, all right. Oh, really? Like, okay, I came yeah. in kind of with the attitude of like, Spielberg making an autobiographical movie about making movies. Uh, all right. Oh. I was going to be self-indulgent. And then I watched it. I was like, that was great. It's I think fucking... there's so much to like. In, in it's great. It. Yeah. I would say that in general, I think this is in general, like when this is very much the Hollywood style now is when you go into like a meeting and someone will say, well, what's your personal connection to a story that you can tell us personally? 100%. And I feel like that's a movie of this era. He made his, his personal connection movie. Yeah. But I prefer the movies where the, I prefer his movies and everyone's movies where the personal connection is more coded. So my v- general reaction was that like I like a Catch Me If You Can or a uh, yeah, ET or something more than more than a Fableman's. But there's a lot to love in that movie. Yeah, some great but, scenes in Fableman. Speaking of ET, does he make a cameo at all in the movie? Does Bruce the Shark appear at all? <laughs> Do they show up, Wags? Look, I don't want to spoil anything, mm-hmm. but uh, someone may be phoning home at a yeah. certain point. There is a scene on the beach that takes place during a thing. It's not a giveaway. There's a big scene that takes place on a ditch day, which is truly about, it's the most important thing in the movie, is a ditch day sequence. If yeah. you've seen the movie, you know how important ditch day I'm is. I'm excited to see this ditch day. And it's on the beach? And it's on the beach. So there's a little bit of a Jaws. Oh, a shout out. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't, I've, I've watched probably about 40 movies this year and you, you probably hit, you've, you're over a hundred mark is my guess, right? 
Yeah, I'm over, I'm over a hundo. You, you've you, you, wow. I, I noticed that you this year you saw a ton of new movies. You've been out to the movies all the time. Well, so Natalie loves going to the movies. So she and uh, she goes more than me. But well, yeah, we we we've been going basically at least once a week. I love going out to the theater. And and you know I used to have issues with claustrophobia in movie theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, really, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I've talked about this on the podcast well, before. Wait, is this because of the? Sp- in people next to you or the space itself? It's just the feeling like, it's like the, I, I get the same feeling like if I was on an airplane where I kind of like get panicky, like I oh. feel like I'm trapped, I'm in an enclosed space, mm. which I know is not logical, but you know, whatever, you're fucking is, is it, is this, Did this fear come after, very dark, but did it come after like theater shootings? No, it wasn't like a theater shooting thing. It was okay. Like a, yeah. Because I just want to let you know, like most people are probably afraid of you in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> if that helps at all. <laughs> A theater shooter's gonna walk in and be like, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> Go wash off this Joker makeup. <laughs> so I had a, a so get a job. <laughs> Contribute to society. Um so the 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 yeah, I used to have that issue and I kind of like got over it as I kind of was dealing with my anxiety in general a little bit better. Uh but I've noticed post pandemic when movie theaters have been open before, I know it's stupid to say post pandemic, but you know what I mean. Like, I'm just like, oh, this feel, it, it, I have the complete opposite feeling now. Now it feels like I'm escaping, like, you know, the, the fucking, uh, cell that is my home. I'm just wow. like, oh, I'm out and about. I get to see the movies. So I've been, lo- I've been loving going to the theaters. I'll say this too, the claustrophobia thing. Mm-hmm. Sadly, probably not that big of an issue with movies these days. You, you're going to, I mean, like if, if you're worried about other people, you're probably in there a lot of the time with yeah. no one else in the, in the theater with you besides Avatar. Which will be- it was. It was. Le- I mean, like here, here's the thing. I've seen some po- uh, some pack movies. I, I, I saw Top Gun Maverick. I think opening mm. weekend. I saw a couple of t- couple of times. Um, so I've been in some back theaters, but it was never about like crowds. It was never mm. about other people. It was more just about the feeling of like this is an enclosure. And again, I, that, that maybe doesn't make sense if you unless you've experienced it. it. But I think that uh, when you read um uh, biographies of people, yeah, it's very common. I, the movie theaters seem to be a setting for panic attacks. Like Steve Martin has a notorious story about how having a he got high and went and saw a movie and had a big panic attack there. And uh, Brian Wilson also had a, I think he had like a psychotic break in a movie theater one wow. time. Uh, and so I think there's, I, I, th- I think there's something to the overwhelming nature of the sound and the image and the darkness of the room. People underrate it as a, as how strange of a place it is to be. Right. They, they walk in and they think like, oh, it's just like room like any other, but it's a, it's a, it's a magical room. Uh, but it's, there's, there's yeah. something to that, like that, that you may, it's a, I, I, I sit on the aisle. That's what I, I do. If there's a, if I feel, if I don't feel comfortable. I was an aisle guy for a while. I've, I've, I've gotten a little bit closer to the center now, mm, but yeah, I, maybe we'll cut this, but I went and saw Night of Cups uh, with a woman I was dating. Oh, don't cut this. And <laughs> I once had a night of cups for with a woman I was dating, and like forty five minutes into the movie, she's like, "We gotta go." And we walked outside, and she was crying, mm. and she was like, "We shouldn't see each other anymore." Oh wow! It was like a, and I was like, "Did the movie do this?" I don't know what the fuck when it happened. I don't know what we were still friends, by the way. You but, never, but you never got closure on what happened. Not really, no. But I don't know what if it was what was happening on screen that is uh she might have had a, a yeah reaction to the reaction kind of, to the movie it's yeah. like a very it's like a very uh it's like an la kind of movie was uh, it your idea to see it yeah of course so not, she, it was not her <laughs> idea to go i mean like so she was like i'm the loser see... who's like let's go see night of cups so was she saying we shouldn't see each other anymore because you suggested this movie that made no her, i don't think it was a, that emotional trauma no okay yeah, yeah, yeah. it's probably like other reasons like, you know, I'm like a 40-year-old child. Yeah, it was, it was just like we're eating like three hot dogs. <laughs> That's the issue. There's nothing like going, like getting into a fight and then going into a movie. I can still remember the one I went in, uh, actually, Ann, who I host the show with, which we used to date many years ago, and we, we went to, we got in a big fight and we went to see Unstoppable. And <laughs> I remember every minute of Unstoppable being angry, looking at the train, being mm-hmm. sad, looking at the train, and then... That's that's and yeah. I, I've I've told this story before, but during uh, silence, Martin Scorsese's silence. Yes, um, I was really hungry, and I was on a date for the movie Silence. And Nick knows this, and I told the the woman I was with, I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and uh, I went and I got a hot dog and ate it very quickly because my stomach was rumbling during silence. <laughs> yeah, and the movie is quiet, so like like during the movie, you just heard like. 
<laughs> I was like, she can fucking hear my stomach rumble. Yeah, and so you said you had to go to the bathroom, yeah. and yeah. then you went and you speed ate a hot dog. You came back smelling like hot dogs. She thought you took a big, like, fucking sticky <laughs> hot dog shit. I mean, she heard the rumbling. Maybe she thought it was like the spirit, the Holy Spirit, or something moving. <laughs> could have been the, it. Uh, yeah, the uh, throughout the uh, the Japanese uh, Christians, they are persecuted. I I, I should have just been like, oh, the bathroom stunk like hot dogs. I don't know what the fuck's going on in there. <laughs> yeah, I love going to the, I love going to the cinema. Let, let's 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 have this conversation. You're an A list member. I'm an A list member. Yeah. member. What if you what 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 did you like? What's your film? I mean, this year? is a film where we dis- I think we disagree a little bit. But my favorite film movie I saw this year was Tar. I fucking absolutely love Tar. Mm-hmm. Can't this get enough of Tar. I'm thinking Lydia Tar all the time. You're yeah, you're a Tar head. I'm a big Tar head. Yeah, yeah. I, I I was less of a Tar fan, but I completely respect it. I completely respect the respect for Tar. Yeah, and love re- Tar. Yeah, loved uh, what what did I see recently? I saw uh, I got the Tar screener the other day. I got the oh, okay. Screener. Mm-hmm. I mean, see it on the big screen if you can, but it'd be a good screener. Um, I, I, I like, I saw the inspection recently, really like the inspection. What's that? Uh, it's like an autobiographical film. Um, the director, I think his name is Elegance Bratton, but it's like about like, you know, he was like a, a, you know, a homeless guy. Uh, he was kicked out of his his house by his homophobic mom and he goes and joins the Marines under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Oh, And it's so like, it's like a really like, it's just like, it's like a really well-made personal story. And also it's like the challenge of, you know, it's like, um, if you've got, it, 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 after Full Metal Jacket, I think the Blank Check guys have talked about this. After Full Metal Jacket, it's like every a boot camp makes you think of Full Metal Jacket, makes you think of Arlie Ermey. So they're yeah. like, it's a boot camp movie. It's like, how do you address that? And it's a completely different like take on it. It feels completely like removed from it. So, oh, that's great. But it, that yeah, it's funny. really well made. It's really personal. Um, uh, I like that one. Uh, fucking love Top Gun Maverick, man. Love Top mm. Gun. Love, love that Top Maverick. Gun. Yeah. I felt did, ba- I, did, I, did I tell you I saw we I, we saw Top Gun Maverick, and the movie ended, um, and uh, the guy a guy like sitting in the row behind us uh, turns to his friend and says, it's "One of the best movies I've ever seen in my life." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Immediately was just like yeah. top five all time. That yeah. was fucking awesome. Hell yeah! You know, come on. Yeah, I, I felt bad telling like I, like I was like oh, I feel bad telling that story about this person who was crying at the reaction of Knight of Cups but then I realized this person their dog also bit my dick and she made like a big <laughs> comedy video out of it wait she so made I a guess, video about that yeah, yeah, yeah that was the thing you told us in confidence and Prez I think you were on this text chain but yeah I, I, I'm, I know the story you remember sure. the night yeah. a, dog, a dog bit my dick and it yes. bled so here's the thing the way Mitch both gives you not enough information and too much information all the time. <laughs> so when we found when we found out about this, we found out because Mitch sent a group text and he just sent the sentence, a dog bit my dick. And then no follow up for four hours. <laughs> we we're like, what? I was what dealing are you talking with my about? fucking dog bitten dick. <laughs> <laughs> We did assume you had died. We just yeah. assumed that you were bleeding out somewhere <laughs> at, <laughs> at a kennel. <laughs> Pitbull gnawed his dick off. He fucking bled to death. It's horrific. Here, here's the crazy thing is that it was the dog bit my bear dick. Yeah. This is the a crazier part about it is like I was. But like your nude dick. My nude dick. Everyone's like, yeah, he's got a bear dick. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I got a cub dick. Um, <laughs> but it bit, it bit, it bit my, my nude penis. Yes. And it drew blood. It did draw blood, and then we did a secret Santa of, of people who were on text chains together, and you sent me a picture of the dog with a thing that said, I'm sorry, Mitch Perez did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went to a, like a Walgreens and had a poster made. <laughs> the, 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 the woman, who's great, a great, super yeah. funny, great person, uh, I was like, what the fuck? Like, why? And she was like, I think she thought it was her, her Kong toy. Which if it's like a thing hey, like that's this, a compliment, thing, dude. You know? <laughs> They're like this big and filled with peanut butter, right? Which, to be fair, there was peanut butter on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, th- uh, I thought you'd never tell the story in the podcast. So, oh, well, here I'm it is. It's out there. I there got you go. The, the, a dog bit my dick. A wow, dog you guys have bit done Mitch's dick. You've done this show for like seven years, and that's never been a story. On it's show never come up. Been. I don't think. I don't think I ever. I don't think I ever told the world that the dog bit my dick. Did I? Who knows? No, Maybe. you've never told. The, I okay. know you've never told the story in the podcast because I thought you never would. Yeah, no, I thought I, you're kind of embarrassed by it. I, I am slight. I mean, no. slightly well, embarrassed. Your feelings by it. have have healed, even if your dick hasn't uh, healed. <laughs> <at times. laughs> 
That is, that's what I use as an excuse now. Like, what's wrong, Mitch? I'm like, a dog bit my dick a long time ago. <laughs> I, I heard after the dog uh, bit your dick that uh, he went and put himself down. <laughs> it was support oh. animal. Yeah. It was the most support for her. <laughs> she later was like, my dog's breath smells worse now. <laughs> that's foul. <laughs> Uh, my dick doesn't smell worse than a dog's breath, for God's sakes. <laughs> um, we knew you were joking. Look, we could talk about this all day, but we got to talk about mixed. So let's yeah. take a break. Everyone think about uh, Mitch's dick being bitten by a dog during my the commercial. My question is, what tastes better, my dick? Or if you're a dog, does my dick taste better than mixed? <laughs> I would say probably yes. We'll find out right after this. We'll be back with more Doughboys. Welcome back to Doughboys. We are here with our guest, Ryan Perez, discussing Mixed, M-I-X-T, which was founded in San Francisco in 2005, uh, formerly Mixed Greens, and has locations in California, Arizona, and Texas. This is doing a weird thing for me because I'm like, wait, I remember Mixed Greens, I think. Yeah, I remember it too. It's not but a Mandela effect. It was Mixed Greens. It was Mixed Greens, yeah. but I'm like, did I ever go to Mixed Greens? Because like Mixed seemed new to me when I... When I went there recently, I was doing walks with Jack mm -hmm. and Susser. Uh-huh. Worked great. My for walks days. with Jack and Susser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. Coming like, this fall, <laughs> my, his, he's there walking. My <laughs> walks with Jack <laughs> and it's, Susser. <laughs> it feels like an hour-long NBC drama. Yeah. Uh, no one watches. Um both those guys that worked great for them both lost weight. Me, I got bigger during these walks. Um, That's muscle, dude. <laughs> we would stop and eat at Mix. Yes, every so often. Sweet Fin and Mixed were kind of our our two go to spots. Yeah, um, which I gotta say, Sweet Fin and Mixed, both very close to Headgum Studios, mm -hmm. might be reviewing them pretty often. Yeah, <laughs> we might be on Sweet Fin eighteen by the end of the year. Um, uh, my thought on mixed was like, I wanted to go to sweet Finn more. So I'll sure, say that. Yeah. More fun. Um, I'll just, I'll say what I said to you up top. Uh, okay, wise, when we got, when, when, we, while we were eating our salads, right. I've never tasted lettuce more in my life. Yeah. Was kind of my <laughs> thought about mixed is like, I'm tasting like every bit of the lettuce leaf. I like, I, I've never, I've never to this degree tasted what lettuce tastes like before mixed. I'm eating, there's so much fucking lettuce yeah. in every one of these fucking bowls <laughs> that even if you have a gallon of salad dressing, you're gonna be just tasting, you're gonna be chewing on lettuce like a fucking cow. Yeah. I, I think if I was going to customize my order, I would ask for an extra dressing because it's aggressively sure. lettuce-y. It's a lot, a lot of just raw greens, mm -hmm. which is fine, but it's like, I felt like I was eating for forty minutes continuously, just but like chewing it, the whole time. Does it don't, that lettuce? T if it's it's like if you found like like mixed greens in a field or something, they taste like. I feel like I'm it, it, I, like I, I truly have never tasted salad in this. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying it's like it's like get like going to the grocery store and getting a mixed green fucking bin. Sure, and then yeah. Putting some toppings it's, on it's it. It tasted like grocery store uh, salad. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah it's too. Yeah. It's too. It's, yeah. it's not. Not I mean, very, that's yeah. my guess, though. Is what I, I don't know what I don't know what they're how they source their product, but my guess is they're getting just like bags and bins of of you know mescaline greens or whatever and mm. romaine, and they're just toss them in a bowl. I could use some mescaline for, to get through that. <laughs> uh, Prez, I'm curious your your take on salads. Are you a salad guy? Are you a bowl man? Uh, I enjoy a salad. I mean, like everybody who's like you know uh, struggling to maintain a healthy weight, I I um I I try to incorporate salads into my um diet right. i'm reminded of david lynch uh have you ever heard david lynch talk about um almost directing return of the jedi no he, he he tells a story you can look this up but he tells a story where he says i went to visit george lucas up in up at his um ranch and we got in his convertible and we, he took us to a restaurant uh, up in Northern California where, and it's not that I don't like salad, but that's all they had there. Um, 
And then he talks about how he says, I didn't, I didn't want to direct it because it had Wookiees or whatever. But that's, <laughs> that's how I feel about it is I, yeah. I, I, it's not that I don't like it. I do, I do enjoy a salad. I just like an option of another thing, you yeah. know, uh, but. I feel uh, like Lynch would, why, why wouldn't he like, uh, Wookiees are kind of strange. I feel like he would, uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, that was a deal breaker for him, apparently. I think he meant Ewoks because, because sure. uh, I think he meant Ewoks. Ewoks. Right. Actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, even though I, I try to be like a health conscious person and, uh, but um. I Actually, that's not true. I don't know. No one cares about what my diet. <laughs> sure, they do. <laughs> Spinning out, thinking about. <laughs> uh, but mixed, I, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, I had never. You, when you guys proposed mixed, not only had I never eaten in mixed, I had never heard of mixed yeah. before. So that wow. shows you how a key. I'm not really plugged into the salad uh, world in Los Angeles. It's fairly mm. new on the scene mm. in SoCal. It's like within the past five years. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very big in the Bay Area. In fact, that's where I had it the first time, the first couple of times. It was just a situation where we were up there for probably for a fucking do a show or some shit. And uh, it was just like, hey, that's the closest. Oh, with me, you're saying. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Closest pseudo healthy option to the hotel. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you going on vacation up north? And it makes sense. It was just for Doughboys. It was yeah. a Doughboys outing. We used to go up to San Francisco just for funsies. We'd go to the Bay Area. I mean, that's a that's a that's a nice little trip. You can make that drive. Mm -hmm. But we... it seems like such a bummer that a, a great food city. To great be food city. Yeah. Mixed up yeah. There. I mean, that's the thing. It's just. But but you. I, I find myself especially on tour making those compromises. Yeah. Where I'm like, well, shit. I I, yeah, I want to eat, eat the fun Burger thing. County or whatever. Tonight. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we got to go to what was the shitty San Francisco place that that the burger place we ate at, and we're like, this sucks. And oh, they, were they fucking got mad people at us. enraged. They got so <laughs> called <laughs> Tasty Burger or yeah, something. Yeah, it was it was, ta it was yeah. Tasty Burger. Yeah. They're like Tasty Burger is great. You got to review it. When you come to San Francisco. We went up there. It was like this place it's, fucking sucks. Yeah, this is like a worse Shake Shack, and Shake Shack's not even that good anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking. I, and then people were, they were all just like so pissed off at us. And then, and then we were like, are you all like Silicon Valley people? I think they were just like yeah. Silicon Valley yeah. people. Silicon Valley people are just, I've never met a smart one. I've never met a single <laughs> smart person that worked in that world. Anyone who's interesting, any good filmmaker that goes and works in that world, they always come back like years later and they're like, I'm working in AI or so. Or they don't know anything. I mean, it's just yeah. where you go to, your brain dies there. I, I, I agree. 100%. Anyway, I am. Um, uh, but now people are like, we're, we're actually very smart. <laughs> yeah, no, we Everybody, everybody else thinks you're smart. I don't think you're smart. What do you think about that? We, we make Twitter run. I don't give a <laughs> shit. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah, <laughs> fucking awful. Um, but Tasty Burger was bad. Mix. Wait, is it now? I'm, now I'm wondering, and maybe Emma can chime in. Is Tasty Burger the one in Boston, or is Tasty that a different? Tasty Burger is the one in Boston. Oh, it's, I'm it's the to one find in Boston. The San Francisco. Oh my god, I'm gonna one. get yeah. so roasted. Yeah, people are gonna Emma. be fucking. I was gonna I, yell at you, but uh, I was waiting till I had the right facts to yell at you, and I don't have them yet. <laughs> uh oh, oh fuck! I'm gonna get in so much trouble. Check the Doughboys wiki. <laughs> probably Vinod, probably Arc. That's like me somewhere. being like, yeah, Regina, Regina. That place sucks. Like just forgetting <laughs> Regina. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I didn't eat a Tasty Burger too much. It, it, that more that place more came about after you'd left Boston, right? This is you. You did this intentionally. I didn't do that intentionally. I thought it was Tasty You're Burger. You're trying to get me in trouble. With Boston. I corrected. If I didn't, if I wanted to get you in trouble, I wouldn't have corrected you. Mm, I wouldn't have chimed in and point. said like, "I'm not sure it is Tasty Burger." That's a good point. Yeah. No, I was like, I was trying, to, taste, I was trying to. To have be your clear, back. Tasty Burger is great. Tasty Burger is great. We liked Tasty Burger a lot. I'll, I'll fucking review Tasty Burger when we go to Boston. Mm. It's not gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> Why you wanna, you're vetoing it? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna. I, every time you come to Boston, I want you to stay longer, and you don't want to stay. What does that have to do with whether or not we review? I want to give you the Boston. I, I, if you come, you got to have the Boston experience. We can have the Boston experience and still review Tasty Burger for the podcast. I got to eat on well Hell's Neck. Local it was one part of the Quincy tour. I didn't get you down to Hell's Neck. What what's, does that what, have to do that? with what I'm saying? I, I, all right, all right. We'll do. I, I'm just saying I, we got to do more of a tour. I gotta get you to do. I gotta get you get try a bar pizza. We gotta, uh -huh. we gotta do the bar pizza run. You gotta you gotta try some beefs, some North Shore beefs. Super like, duper burger. Super That's duper burger. Was. That's the one. Oh yeah, my okay. god! And the name is way worse than Tasty Burger. <laughs> sucks. <laughs> super duper burger. <laughs> that sucks. We Thank love, you, Emma. We love super yeah. duper burger and mixed up in San Francisco. Those are our favorite restaurants. The Doughboys shouldn't insult them. Shut up. <laughs> what are you? I work in uh, in in Silicon Valley. What do you do I, I, on Twitter? You know the bird that I make sure the bird is on the homepage. <laughs> what? Cool, I guess. I make a quarter million dollars a year. What? What, what the fuck are you talking about? 
Uh, so mixed. Uh, yeah, I I've been a few times, and mm. it, you know it, it it's it's down here in L.A. You, the, the big thing is there's a lot of these places, at least in L.A. I don't think there's a lot of these places all over the country. But mm-hmm. I think if you live in like a, like an L.A., a New York City, San Francisco, and Washington, the, this D.C. genre, there's a place. Uh, Austin. The last time I worked in New York, there was a place Dig or Dig uh-huh. In in New York, which is very, very similar. That's like I need a, I want a healthy lunch. It's a bowl or blah, blah, blah. And everybody, every fucking TV writer in the world has a joke about how we did a lot of Dig In or blah, 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 or mixed or da, da, da. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. everybody has. Yeah. It's a thing that does still get me mad. Probably because of, because of my Sims time at the Simpsons, uh, where I worked at the Simpsons, and people would like I would go to like restaurants that were good, mm-hmm. and then people were like, mm, "We hate this," you know. Like I go oh, yeah. like once a week to Clementine, great restaurant, and then people would be like, "We're sick of Clementine." I'm like, "Well, you're sick of everything. You get you get a thing every day. You get yeah. a new thing every we day. We get our lunch delivered to us every day, <laughs> and sometimes we don't like it." <laughs> And, all, and 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 this is exactly how Perez sounded is what yeah. they sound what they yeah. sound like and then also on top of that it's the worst thing I love a lot of the Simpsons guys don't get me wrong mm-hmm. uh Selman we love you we're going to see him love tomorrow you, night uh Father time a lot of a lot of a lot of, a lot of oh, oh Jesus I, I so, just spilled. This is for the video. This is exciting video. I just knocked my head gum water bottle off. Thank God that was a bo- like a bottle with a cap on it. Yes, thank God. That would have been a catastrophe. Water would have been everywhere. So I just want to say this. You guys uh, shoot in 4K? Is that 4K? <laughs> Rochelle? Can we slow that down? Can we show the spill? The HDR? <laughs> <laughs> Should I uh, ship HeadGum a sippy cup for you, Wags? <laughs> I'm just I'm just. You know what's funny is that. Refastening the bottle. I'm re-screwing back on the bottle after every sip. So what, the, someone, the someone, someone that, like one of our listeners early on sent you a no spill cup. Yeah. You never used it. You, no, you, I did you, use it. I spilled it immediately. Oh, that's right. You did. <laughs> I was like, that sounds like a wager mm-hmm. to me. And you know what? That thing was fucking dribbling all over your table. Yeah. With that same record. It's not the only thing that's dribbling all over the table. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, for the dog bite. Um, I, it, it drew blood. I, there was, yeah, I know. You never, you don't think you'll see that ever in your life. It, um, your first blood, not me. <laughs> you did spill. It was like a Marvel. It was like a, like a Thanos, like. It's like the unspillable cup, and then you were like, "Dude, knock it over <laughs> immediately." Um, but I, I just want to point this out: you yeah. before this, before the recording started, there a a, a a a laptop table was offered up. Yes, and you said, "Hey, let me see that laptop table. I think that'd be good for the show. I'll put my thing on there, or uh-huh. whatever." But you didn't like the impression, and then. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it sounds like me, but fine. Then you, like then you hit the laptop table, you and you make your drink spill. Yeah, I know. You complicated things. It's too complicated. I think it's still a net positive. Why is your Why is your water bottle sitting next to you on the couch like it's a friend? Just put it on a table. But it's that this is like it's right here now. No, but you but you knocked it he's over. Got, but he's got to handle an iPad. He's got to read some materials yeah. and everything. He's got he's, he's a man only has two hands. You know him. He's playing some sort of fucking Marvel snap. <laughs> oh, he's that pro- stupid <laughs> fucking thing. <laughs> Fucking Weiger's probably on snood on the whole recording, man. <laughs> oh, every person I've talked to that like you've worked for, uh-huh. they'd be like, Weiger's great. He's like a machine. I'll go over and uh, you know, I'll be writing a script and like texting people and playing video games all at once. Like yeah. uh, you're like uh the uh, uh what what is what's the minority movie? report? Minority report. Yeah. You're like you're you're moving all the time. It's true, Weiger's a talented man. Yeah, God bless Weiger, you. Weiger, you know, you don't get enough I've I've said Mitch, I've I've said complimentary things about you, Mitch. Weiger, you're a talented man. I've worked with you a couple times and you're very you're 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 a, you're a world-class writer thank 100%. you buddy class writer you really i wish Praise i had your Caesar. i wish i had your focus your ability he doesn't like to ability. do it as much anymore that's uh, that, that i'm lazy <laughs> fucking lazy work sucks <laughs> you got a gift i cried and told him that he should do it more than the, uh, like the last episode we did and i was like yeah <laughs> no i mean like it's, it's like opened his soul yeah <laughs> It's, I, I, I think it's a, it's, it's kind of a, you know, it developed more of a work to live as opposed to live to work attitude. Also, just to address uh, yeah, yeah. it, yeah, we had a friend in the hospital who we thought was dying. Yes, that's a big, that was so, a big part of which yes, I can now the safely say since because he's seems yes. like everything yes, thank is okay. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Um, but, but it was uh, affecting all of us. Um, anyway, uh, uh, mixed is going back to the Simpsons writers thing, yes. thing of it all. I don't think mixed is good, and I complained about it even today. And I think that, honestly, it makes me like other 
bowl and sandwich places more, which you guys know, Mendocino, Mendocino Farms, working at Funnier Die, that was a yeah. thing you got a lot. The lot. Uh, the, the, all over at the lot, yeah. where the birthday boys wrote uh, one of our seasons of the show there mm-hmm. as well. Exactly. Um, and, uh, and Terrence Malick used to be the, his old haunt. Terrence Malick used to be there. We talked, actually, me and a, friend, uh, a couple friends saw, met him one day. That's right. I, I remember this. Yeah. And, uh, we said we worked at Funnier Die, and he said, uh, oh, Will's place. Oh, I just love Zoolander. When is Will going to do Zoolander 2? <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> he's a rig zoolander fan that's great and also one time he worked there was a restaurant on the lot there was a, he he uh uh it was called uh gary arabia it was a yes restaurant on the lot. you've yeah. probably talked about that restaurant but one day we went in and he had a camera on the table and he was just shooting his pasta and i think he was doing a camera <laughs> test with the just <laughs> probably for night of cups He's probably Watch shooting the, the tell, night of cups. Tell Mitch not to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and look out for that dog. Uh, anyway, what you were talking about uh, the uh, there's uh, a shot. Of, there's a shot of a, a pasta <laughs> on a table and night of cups. That just makes you like <laughs> ex- burst into tears. <laughs> it's just so moving. Someone's someone's delivering like a monologue while that <laughs> shot is on screen. I gotta say this too. Yeah. Um, the birthday boys production offices were in there, and then literally next door to us was like Game of Thrones. And it was funny to think of the next door successes, yeah. like comparatively <laughs> one room where uh, a thousand people, maybe tops would see this. And then one room over is like a, you know, like whatever, 30 million people yeah. were watching oh, the show. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. But in terms of zeitgeist, but the advantage you have over Game of Thrones is your show did not suck shit. <laughs> <laughs> Show did not make me feel like I wasted seven years yeah, watching it. Your show ended when people liked it. <laughs> yeah, I think they were pr- particularly happy that it was over. Uh, uh, anyways, I, I I think that Mendo and Tender Greens get a little bit of a bad rap because I think it is that sort of thing of like people go there all the time. And look, Tender, I think maybe both of them have dropped in quality. Sure, but at the time I was like, these are good, and and I, I like a Mendo sandwich. I'm like. There's a bunch of different Mendo sandwiches that I would like more than the sandwiches we got today. But that being said, the sandwiches we got today, Wags, you said it. You took a bite of it and you said, are the sandwiches good? Yeah. And I think they maybe are one of the better things you can get there. This this is a thing, and we we talked about this with Amelia, who is who 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 picked up the food for us uh and was uh was was dining with us is like the best things from this salad bowl place are the sandwiches we had and then the chocolate chip cookie we had for dessert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, that's kind of an indictment of the whole concept. Feels like a cheat. Yeah. Feels like, yeah. My thought is like, should it be called witched or, <laughs> br- or breaded? Right. Or, or, or honestly, later on, cooked or, or crumbled or whatever. Like oh. the, 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 the cookie, which we have a, an, an extra one right here uh, that we can, we can, wow. we can try Ooh, a little bit more. Let's do a giveaway. As a, yeah, we'll give away. We're gonna do a, we're gonna do a segment. We're gonna okay it. <laughs> All right, you guess the dog that bit my dick. You get the cookie. <laughs> we'll send it to you. Guess the dog, like the, the like the name of the dog or the breed. <laughs> <laughs> the both. name, both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're gonna get both exactly right. Um, Bichon Freeze named Alex. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anyway, uh, this cookie is great. It's a good cookie. A great cookie, a highlight of the meal. Very chocolatey, if that is, too. If that's the highlight of the meal. And also the sandwich, I was like, the sandwich wasn't, I wasn't like thrilled with the sandwich, mm-hmm. but I'm like, I liked this more than 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 probably salad. And my salad, by the way, was not bad. It's just that sort of thing of what we were saying is like, you're eating like a bin of, you're eating so much lettuce. It's so much. I, I think that there's something of like, they. this is a common thing with restaurants, and I think they especially feel it with salads. It's like, we need to inflate the portion size to justify the cost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I, I honestly think every salad you get from one of these salad places, I'm good for now. Um, Mitch is offering me a cookie. cookie. Oh, I simply can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, uh, the, the, the cookie is good. I think the 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 issue with all these places is like like to justify the cost of the menu item, they have to make these too big. And so like you get through an entire mixed salad, you get through an entire sweet green bowl. It's like it's exhausting. Yes. It's yeah. so much fucking food. And it's especially it's so much chewing because you're dealing with so many raw ingredients. But I, I think all these places, the places you mentioned, Mitch, Mendo- Mendocino Farms and Tender Greens, which I think are both local to L.A. Actually, actually I'm not sure if Tender Greens might be national. Um 
uh, Mendocino, I think, is a little bit more. Wait, no, wait. Mendocino started expanding to the similarly to like Arizona and Texas, so they're both they both have more a wider footprint now. Also, probably part of the reason that the quality maybe has gone down. One hundred percent. But all these places are just basically you know pure sustenance. These are just like here is a workplace pile. Here is like you know what I got a break in my day and I can't even make this. Uh, joyful, like this, also has to be a fucking slog. Yes, that's be- the name of the genre. I was yeah. we talking about the name of what is this genre? Joyless is yeah. the name of the genre. Yes. Joyless lunches. <laughs> yes, like thinking about. I've had sweet green for dinner multiple times, and thinking about, it, I'm like, oh, it's depressing. Yeah, it's the a night I was in my house eating sweet green alone. Oh, you don't want to do it for dinner. That's the end. That's Ugh. when you know you're at the end. Is when you're eating sweet green for dinner. That's- yeah, I've done it. I've done that move. We'll do that move. <laughs> we'll do the tender greens for dinner too, which is usually that's a little better, but yeah. it's like. I, I I kind of think that yes, mix is not not particular does not really stand out, and I think that might be just kind of like because in this category everything is the same, right? It's like are are any of these better than any others, or is it just like you have enough sweet green where you get sick of it? You're just like, well, fuck it, I'll have mixed because I truly thought that t- tender greens and 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 Mendo when they were at their peak were 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 better. Sure, I and I, and, I, and I and I honestly maybe Earth Cafe is better too. I mean, like uh, the Earth Cafe also just has so many options. I think Earth Cafe though is also just like a couple locations, right? Yeah, that's just yeah. an LA chain. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not okay. That's fair. But yeah, no, it's eating sweet green alone at night, like you can tell, like the cat, you can tell, like the cats are like feel yeah. bad for me. Yeah, it's like it's, you just can feel the vibe. <laughs> right, the cats are kind of like they go upstairs. <laughs> they don't want to fucking watch me do it. Yeah, they're like <laughs> sucks. We can't even bite your dick. <laughs> <laughs> To make you feel better. <laughs> I guess we should get into what we got specifically. Mm. Uh, so the we we had an order we had together. I actually very recently had the Zesty Bowl. In fact, last time I was at HeadGum, I had the Zesty Bowl for lunch. And I will say the bowl I liked a lot better than the salads I've had there. Because the bowl has, you know, like, like a, it, it's got quinoa and kale as a basis instead of just like greens. And as such, it just feels a little bit you know, a little bit more filling and just a little bit less of a slog to eat. Uh, for this particular one, I got the falaf salad, uh, which is their uh, mixed greens, whatever that blend is, house-baked falafel crumbles, roasted cauliflower, avocado grapes, cucumbers, chickpeas, fresh herbs, lemon tahini vinaigrette. Could have used a little bit more dressing. It was perfectly fine. I mean, here's my mixed take. And I said I was going to say this on the pod, Mitch. Mm. Mixed, hard to mix. The, the the containers they put it in, it's kind of hard to to fucking mix up and get your dressing distributed. Oh, I like this. Um, I, I could have used I a know, better bowl. I knew I knew the I reviews agree. were going to be mixed, but I didn't think you were going to say the thing about it. it was mixed. <laughs> very good. Very good. Mix is he, he he said this right before he got here. Mixed, yeah. hard to mix, and I was like, you fucking nailed it. Yeah. It is. It is. It's it's hard to. It is fucking hard, to, hard mix. to mix. Yeah, it's hard to mix. I agree with you. I, I and here's the thing. We've talked about this before. I'm yeah. not a guy who puts. The dressing in then shakes it. You lose so much dressing. And here with mixed, if you lose dressing, you're in trouble. They don't you, give you enough. They yeah. don't give you enough dressing. Mm. I, and uh, they give you a pretty big fucking cup, by the way. It's like a big cup of dressing, but there's so much lettuce. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, the the salad should be tossed. I'm gonna say this like when they make it in store, they do it in a bowl and they do mix it up in huge in, difference. Yeah. And I'm like, I wonder why they don't do that. They also mix it in with the dressing though. But I'm like. If you dress, if you mixed all the ingredients and then put the dressing in, like you can mix the dressing in on your own. You know what I mean? Like it would be, it would be helpful because so so often it's like, I had the the bachelor salad, a mm-hmm. uh, fitting little salad for me, and I was like, oh, I ate a pile of blue cheese, <laughs> uh-huh. and then I'm like, now I'm eating the steak. Like I was like trying to get them yes. separated. Oh, you were trying to make the perfect bite with each. I was tr- I was trying I was trying to like I was trying to do that, but then so often I'd be like, yeah. oh, there's still a mound of. Tomatoes that yeah. like I didn't uh, get all the way through, um, and it, it, I, I agree with you. It's it's in in restaurant that's not an issue. They do mix it, they mix it up, and they also ask you like light, medium, or heavy dressing. But also, it's kind of embarrassing because like you should go medium to heavy, but you're at a health food place and you're like, I guess like light, I should do light, but never go light at mixed with the dressing. I, I like it, and and this is more common. It, I eat sweet green more frequently when they ask you the same question, but I always go heavy. I, I find and I have no shame about going heavy. The doughboys mm-hmm. always go heavy. Always go heavy. Yeah, <laughs> but I but also I, I like part of my thought is like, look, if you're an employee there, you're churning out so many salads. There's no way you're even gonna remember the dude, who, the the fat guy who asked for heavy dressing. Like it's not sure. like like that doesn't enter into your brain at all. You just it's it's all muscle memory by that point. So you don't. They have to feel did shame seem about to it. remember me, Jack and Susser. <laughs> 
It is like if like the fat boys walked into a restaurant. Uh, we wrapped our fucking order to them uh, every day we came in there. Um, uh, yeah, I just I just don't know how I I can't see anyone being excited about going here, right? Like, can can you think of anyone who's like, ooh, mixed? This is fun. I think the I think the any excitement for mix that I've ever had has been like I should have a salad mm -hmm. and I don't normally get this. So it's like from the standpoint of like this is a this is a more exotic, healthy option. It, it, it doesn't come from like I'm craving this thing. I'm craving this salad, which I will say, back to Mendocino Farms. There are times that I'm like craving that Impossible Taco salad as a salad, yes. mm -hmm. or I'm craving that uh you know the the Save Drake's Farm salad. Hey, they had yeah. a chicken prosciutto salad there yeah. that I thought was good. I like. I I genuinely think probably not as good for you. By the way, mm -hmm. is my guess. But I just sure maybe there's a, some couple that loves to bike or something. And I sometimes have the thing of like I want vegetables. Yeah, like I want Get that. Like 100%. I want like I, it's I've eaten too bad for too long. I need a lunch full of vegetables, and so I could see maybe getting excited about the prospect of a heavy lettuce, like a salad that just has a shit ton of lettuce in it. Right, like which you but definitely get here. You don't, know? don't. But don't you think that even like Mendo does that? Because like Mendo will have like those thick carrots on it and stuff. Like I'm that's like, that's true. That's true. I'm like, I feel like they do like a like you're getting better veggie. Like this they feels so much veggie. like yeah. it feels like you were saying, kind of just like a grocery store roundup of of veggies. It doesn't. There, it, like when I'm eating Mendo yeah. veggies, I'm like, this feels like whatever. This came from Mendocino Farms or whatever the fuck. From the Mendocino Farms. From Farm. the Mendocino Farms. Not Farm. from that Swallows guy, whatever he's doing. <laughs> Mendoc not from Swallows Farms, Mendocino Farms. <laughs> uh, I have the menu up here. Uh, Prez, you got the cowboy salad. I got the cowboy salad. Now, my reasoning for this was that I was like, I'm on, I'm on Doughboys here. Yeah. And they got, there, there were things that were, they were like uh, chicken fried chicken sandwiches stuff. I, I, I was eyeing the Bachelor. I'm a bachelor. I was eyeing the bachelor. Sure. I but I ultimately settled on the cowboy salad because I was like, I, I don't want to get something. I don't want to get some beet salad that I'm going to just hate eating the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get something that's like the cheat, actually unhealthy thing on the menu. Right. So I'm going to go with kind of a down the middle thing that's kind of healthy. And so salads, romaine hearts, grilled chicken, fresh red peppers, black beans, sharp cheddar, scallions, blue cheese, and chipotle honey drizzle. Can I just say it that? Each of our salads kind of describes us. You got the cowboy, sure, the bachelor, uh -huh. and old falaf. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm falaf. I used to be a, a SoCal surfer dude, but now I'm a man of the West. I'm a cowboy. <laughs> I've changed that. Nick, because now you you claim that the title. <laughs> Uh, the, yeah, I, I will say that the thing about the falaf salad is for, it was vegan and for a vegan salad, you know, like, Hey, that there, there's, uh, there's a number of takes on that. That could be pretty flavorful. And this was one of them. I think this was a, this was a, a great option. If you know what, that's maybe someone who could be excited for mixed. If you're vegan, I could see that, 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 that's okay. a pretty, that's yeah. a pretty uh, like well-considered, well-composed option. Also though, yes. yeah. Worst city in maybe the United States to say, that. I mean, maybe not the United States, but great vegan food here. Like sure. Yeah. One of the best, like, a, like a, I don't know. I don't know if mix would even be that exciting to 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 be. I'm looking for something. I mean, I don't know. Are, are you? Where are you, Nick? On your journey, are you? A, are you eating vegan a lot? Or, or he just uh, said the other day that he was thinking about going vegan. It scared the shit out of me. You th you thought James Cameron looked so good. James Cameron he, looks fantastic. He does, but also he looks so fucking good. My rebuttal to you is: you want to live longer. <laughs> Well, if I can, be, like, if I can become a Navi, maybe That's a good point. put my brain into a fucking avatar, <laughs> abandon this corpse. Cameron is seventy five. Yeah. You want to be around when you're seventy five? I don't know. He he look he looks really good. Wow. He's like he's got that he's got that 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 like uh you know slender. I mean the same thing happened. Slenderman. To, Slenderman. Yeah, he's got the Slenderman thing. He's got that, the same thing happened to Bill Clinton. It just like he went vegan. And he just like like got so slim. Well, he's so got that. He's also got that. <laughs> Epstein juice or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the special, the special little concoction they give you. To... Right. <laughs> Clinton got like bone. You're like, there's like, I've, there's like bones I've never seen coming out of Clinton. Oh now. yeah, He's, He's, got like new, bony. He's got new kinds of bones. <laughs> He's got the new bones. The Jack Skellington physique. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the here uh, okay so the the sandwiches we got we got the mixed crispy which is crispy chicken apple fennel slaw house pickles herb mayo on a, on a torpedo roll and also the grilled chicken uh, which is uh, also a uh, sliced seasonal apple they both are apple chicken concepts just one is fried and one is 
um, as grilled. I just uh, don't know if we ever talked about and, and how, basil pesto. Yeah. how uh, someone described Bill Clinton's penis as a roll of quarters. Do you, do you remember yes, this? Yeah, that was one of the uh, testimonies from people who had been victimized by him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, oh, wait, is this during the Lewinsky trial or... Was this later? Yeah, this on? was no. This was back in. This was this was some. This was like the Paula Jones trial or something. Ah, uh, okay. Roll of quarters. I think they also said he was grading on a curve. If you catch my drift. Really? Yeah. Mm. A little bit. Of, a little bit of a hook shot. I wonder if they meant the old quarter or the new. Well, I guess the old quarter at that time would have been <laughs> like the new, not that new design with the <laughs> Washington with the hairs different. Anyway, I thought that he would at least be Sacagawea roll of. I thought he'd be a little bit more than a roll of quarter. Like he's a sex guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't mean you have a fucking huge dick. Yeah. Ep- look point. at Epstein. Epstein supposedly hit like they were just like, hey, his dick looks like an egg. And uh, and obviously Harvey Weinstein, jail a, a jailed monster. I mean, all these guys are fucking pieces Yeah, they're of all shit. monsters. The dark, dark but, like, he's, alley we're He going like down has like no like he has like a fucking completely he has no testicles, right? Yeah. He had a stick where he injected himself to have sex. I think there's which a- I want you know that I that's my <laughs> Indiana Jones is to get that stick. Uh, that belongs in a museum. Sorry. <laughs> you ain't getting that. I, I, I there's maybe a, some sort of relation to I don't know if it's overcompensation or All right, what, hold on know. a second. Don't say that there's a perv slash small dick. I'm not saying okay. that. No, All I'm right. just I'm saying that, that, that this may be part of the psychology of mm. you know that whole weird fucking power dynamic. Sure. Um, I wouldn't uh, know. We don't need to. We don't need to get I into it. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> we don't need to get into it any <laughs> more than we have. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, uh, so we also got the crispy cauliflower. Uh, the crispy cauliflower, you know, was fine. It didn't travel well. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's uh, the sort of deep fried. Items just aren't going to do that. But I I think both of those sandwiches were pretty solid. And honestly, if I was going to order from Mix and I wasn't going to care about my waistline, I'd be like, you know what? That fucking Mix crispy sandwich is probably the best tasting thing they have. Come on. We, are you ever going to get that sandwich, though? No, I'll... I wouldn't. But I'm yeah. saying, like, the situation would be like, hey, we're going to get mixed. Yes. Do you want something? Which will happen here. At some point, there will be a lunch order for mixed. And you know what? I'll be like, fuck it. Yeah, I'll go take that crispy channel. This is too specific of a circumstance. No one. <laughs> yeah, no this one. is like a one in a million thing where it's like where you don't have a choice in the restaurant, but you have a choice of the order is like, yes, okie dokie. It's yeah. never going it to, may, it may, it might happen to one person listening to the podcast. I, I think that people who are in, I think, I think in a, in a workplace or mm-hmm. like if you've got, you know, if you've got a workplace where like, hey, everyone's going to lunch. I've been, in, I've been in, you know, I've had standard office jobs or, you know, or when I worked in the video game industry, it's like, there are times just like, hey, we're going to lunch at this place. And it was like, fuck it. Well, I don't necessarily want California Chicken Cafe today, but that's where we're going. Yes, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fix something. So I think that circumstance does happen. Yeah. And I think it also happens with families. Um, I talked about this while, while we were eating, but yeah. When we were recording the Christmas special, which yes. is a day no one was happy to be here, right. um, you, they were like, we can go get some lunch delivered during like the break. We had a break period. Yeah. And they listed off and they were like, whatever, whatever, mixed. And you're like, oh, mixed. It would be good to go healthy. Like, let's get mixed. Yeah. And I knew that you were in here basically, you know, against your will. You didn't <laughs> want to do it. And I was like, I was just like, let Weiger have his thing. But in my head, I was like, Fuck. I was like, this sucks. This day already sucks so bad. And now we're also getting mixed. And also the look on, <laughs> by the way, I I don't know. I don't know how Rochelle, how you feel about about mix, but like the look on the headgum employees' face when we when we said mix, they were all like, uh and it was like, oh, <laughs> you guys are sick of this already. You yeah, hate sure. Yeah. Mixed. Do, how do you feel about it? I've never had it because it just has never seemed appealing to me. Wow. I mean, that states it all. That says it all that, right there. I mean, it does. <laughs> You're down the street from mixed, and I've never, I work here, I've never had it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad sign. Well, look, we got to get to our final thoughts. Yeah. But we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with our fork scores. Wow. Right after this. New way to do it. All New right. way to do it. Hmm. Welcome back to Doughboys. We are here with Ryan Perez. It's time for our final thoughts on Mixed. So here's how this will work. We'll each go around. 
we'll say a closing argument, if you will, on this particular chain and end it by giving a score from zero to five forks. Brian Perez, you are a guest. Your thoughts on mixed, your fork score. Oh boy. Um, yes, I think, um, first of all, just it's a, it's a pleasure to eat at a hip Silver Lake place. Like here, I feel like other places we've, I've talked, anytime I've talked about food on this show, my question has been, you know, whatever, uh, oh boy, uh, wh how much burger can we eat or whatever this, sure. I, today I was thinking, what's my new tat gonna be? You know, like it's, it's just cool to be, to be <laughs> here in, in Silver Lake at HeadGum. Um, but um, I would say in this genre, this general genre, this, it really is like, as, as has been stated, this is food that you get at work when you want to have a lunch and have it be and kind of be a, 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 a not uh, too caloric of a meal. This is a pretty mediocre version of that mm. uh, genre, I would feel like, uh, the, the joyless lunch genre, so as I'm calling it now. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, two and a half forks wow. for mixed. And I would say the one thing is like, if I'm over here one day um, and I want, and I'm just like, God, I just need to eat a ton of lettuce. I need to get a bunch yeah. of lettuce into my system right, right away. <laughs> I may re revisit mixed. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I'll definitely, I mean, I'll definitely go back. That's one that I, I mean that whether, how much I like it or not, I'll, I will end up going back. Uh, <laughs> a two and a half forks from Ryan Perez. Mitch, your thoughts, your fork score. Um, my, my dad would at work. He would walk and get his uh, get his lunch every day. He would go and get a, a, either a turkey sandwich, yeah, or a burrito, basically plain, like no cheese and sour cream. Kind of wild, but he was. Uh, my dad was uh, afraid of the. Uh, I grew up in a household that had drank skim milk, right, and like a bread heavy. <laughs> This is like a the, the low fat, like where you know, like fat is bad. One hundred percent, yeah. Household, completely different era of nutrition. Yeah, and 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 he uh, and and but he would walk and get and he get the same thing every you know every day. You know, one one of those two things. If I am working at Headgum every day, uh huh, I'm not. There's nothing at mixed that I'd be happy with eating on on a daily basis, and I'm a guy who can eat the same lunch. Almost every day, I, I like I, I eat sidewalk grill a lot. Almost I like my my lunch rotation spots are are the same. You know this. I it's a, yeah. I can I can eat the same thing a lot of the time. I I can't I can't do it there. I I know the plus side of it. Like hey, if I'm if I'm dieting and 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 eating just salads, I know that I can. This is a lunch meal, and I'm not even thinking about the the you know the joy I get from eating it, which you shouldn't with every meal, of course. Like it, a lot of the time. This is a, it's his energy. You're just eating this for energy. For fuel. For fuel. Um, but this place just doesn't, it's just as boring as hell. And like now after having it a few times, I'll say this. When we were walking, when Jack and, uh, when we're, our walks, my walks with Jack and Sus. <laughs> my uh, walks with Jack. They walked. They were friends. And together they learned <laughs> about each other. There'd friends be like a. one foot. In front of the other. <laughs> <laughs> There'd definitely be the scene where, like, it was just two of them at a certain point. Oh. Like, oh, man. Oh, one, yeah. of is... one of them is not there anymore. And then you look, and just one of us is trailing way behind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are you uh, slow? <laughs> okay. <laughs> one of us is even slower. <laughs> uh, pro I mean, that would be me, probably. Um, I, uh... So, we, we would do these... We would do our walks, and... Uh, you know, the options were mixed, uh, sweet fin, the bowls. And then uh, there was this other place, this Mediterranean place. Um, we ate it mixed a few times. Sweet fin became like, it was like, oh, well, I like sweet fin. We're going to do sweet fin. The Mediterranean place, we got kebabs. I literally uh, bit into a raw chicken kebab, like not just undercooked chicken right. kebab, to uh, like like raw on the inside. After that happened, I still wanted to go to the Mediterranean place more than I wanted to go to Mixed. I'm just saying, like, that's how not exciting Mixed is. Yes. <laughs> is that I was like, let's go back to the raw chicken place instead of going to Mixed. In fact, let's bring a dog in, let it bite my <laughs> dick again before I go back to fucking Mixed. I don't... Mixed is not fun in any way. Yeah. But... For what it is and what it's trying to do, 
I'll give it two and a half forks with Perez because that's what was in my in my mind. But not exciting. Like it's almost more fun for a place to just be outright bad than what mixed is. Mixed yeah. is just fucking boring. I don't. I don't. And, and now we're gonna eat it so much, and I know you're gonna be like. Ah, we should get some mix today before the record. We're going to eat it so fucking many times. Don't preemptively get mad at me. <laughs> I mean, but it's going to happen. I know it's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it's going to happen, but still, you can be, get mad at me then, not now. But not because you let, but uh, the case would be, you're going to, yeah, you will You will eat it a lot, but to save your life. Yes. To prolong your, this this life so you can get James Cameron age. Exactly. <laughs> I'll never look as, I'll never look as good as James Cameron looks at 75 throughout my entire life. It's like a million bucks. He looks great. Uh, I'll say this. I got the bachelor salad, which is a steak salad. Yeah, the, the you know the thing that you you should get the least, and um and that was the best salad I had there, and it had some um it some had some caramelized onions on there, which were it it just kind of uh uh overtook the the taste of lettuce, and maybe the bowls are better, but you had a bowl, yeah. So let's hear it from the bowl guy. You've had a bowl. Uh, I, just one thing I'd uh, on the bachelor salad. If you order that in restaurant, uh, when they hand it to you, they say, "Will you accept this bowl?" <laughs> <laughs> so that's a fun little detail. Uh, I here's the thing. I want to go back to something you said earlier, Mitch, about mm-hmm. when we when we got mixed for during our previous record, yeah. and you were mad about it. Okay, so let's let no. I just I just want to say this. I, I'm I'm not trying to say that like uh, you know I was right. I, about I didn't that. voice. I didn't voice. I was like sure. Yeah, I know. You, you were silently stewing about it. You were silently. Yeah, but you didn't know that's all mad. You were silently stewing like a Knight of Cups character. <laughs> like, <laughs> not expressing it through the dialogue, through yeah. more through your expression. Yeah. yeah, this fork is manipulating pasta yeah. slowly. Yeah. And that's how your understanding is in herself. Uh, so we 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 were. No, I'll be verbally stewing in twisted metal coming out this summer. <laughs> Character's name is Stu. Character's name is Stu. Yeah. <laughs> and you're eating Stu? Yeah, I think probably. so. I think, yeah, we worked that in. So the thing is, sometimes you need, like, working food. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, And if we'd gotten Jersey Mike's, which is we would have wanted and we would have enjoyed, we would have been so fucking tired that the back half of that day. It would have been a nightmare. It would have been spe- tough. Specifically for you, you would have been, it would have been a nightmare. It would have been tough. So, like, there are times when you need this sort of place. And so the, the, this, this, the, 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 the joyless... Uh, a work sustenance, to borrow a Perez's phrasing, uh, the 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 workplace pile is like it has its place just in society, and sure. I think this place does it capably. It's not a standout. It's not really fallen behind. I think two and a half forks is about right for it, but I honestly think this place executes everything well enough to nudge it up to three forks. I think that's a three forker. Right, it's, it's right down the middle. It's fair. Yeah. Almost hand holding. I, I was gonna I was gonna say this to you. You you we talked about this before. Like you yeah. were like, I used to work out in the morning and I felt like shit. I did used to do that, yeah. And so I my thought like is I get having a Jersey Mike sub will maybe make you a little bit tired. Does eating mixed make you feel like good? Because I don't I don't necessarily feel good after well, I mixed. never feel good. I mean, I, <laughs> That's a great. Do point. I feel good right now? <laughs> a lot goes into that question. Yeah. <laughs> With, I don't know if it's the mixed in my belly that's making me. Uh, uh, yes, feel I mean, bad. like, it's, I guess it does. It's not heavy. It's it's not it's not the thing where you're feel. But like, is could you have had a Chipotle bowl and feel just as good? Chipotle, I mean, that's the same sort of ballpark. I think if I got in a Chipotle bowl, it would have been, yeah, I would have liked I'd it more. Prefer a Chipotle, Chipotle we we bowl. were talking Chipotle yeah. bowls beforehand, and we were yeah. like, we've gotten a lot of shit to put Chipotle even on the podcast. We've gotten, we've gone back and forth. We've been nice to it and mean to it. Hmm. And I'm like, a Chipotle bowl probably wouldn't make me feel any heavier than than what we ate, and it is way better. I, I would, I would be much happier eating a Chipotle bowl. Our Chipotle yeah. journey has been wild on this podcast. Yeah, I think we reviewed it three or four times. Mm. We were, Mike Hanford, I remember. First Mike time. Hanford, one of one of our. I go way back. You got, some of you got some of you new new listeners don't know, but I go way back. I've been listening. I've been listening to the show since day one. Just so you know, I, I, go, I go way back. These guys, I have a history before this. I know, them, I know them. I know these guys before the show. Before, before even before they started the podcast, I know them. <laughs> They're gonna like that too. The listeners They're gonna love that. He's good. He's, he's good. Yeah, I like that he likes it. No, no, this guy's got a report. This guy's got a report. He goes back. He goes back. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that play, the Chipotle, 
episode with Mike Hanford, it was the first entry in the Platinum Plate Club. We were so high on a, a Chipotle, we all gave it five forks. And then Really? Yeah, and then the next time we reviewed it, I think was Chelsea Davison. That was either the second or third time. Uh, and we we were also, and it was their queso had just come out, and the original recipe queso was really chalky and not cheesy enough. It was a really poor I kind of like it now, by the way. I, I th That's the thing. Their queso's gotten good now. Yeah, yeah. I get their queso now, but their original recipe queso was pretty bad. Mm. And we were, we were way down on it, and then we kind of landed in the middle. We did it again with the uh, uh, the Bruise Brothers. Um, yeah. And uh, How the fuck are you recalling all of this? This is insane to me. I'm just remember. I like. I'm probably missing one. We've probably done it again. He's yeah. on the message boards. He knows. He, he he's <laughs> reviewing. I'm actually Darth Cum on the uh, fucking subreddit, <laughs> always posting about giving Mitch shit. <laughs> Mitch was actually wrong about a super duper burger. I don't think he's been to Boston. <laughs> he know what tasty burger. Me. Uh, the the so. Darth Cum. <laughs> good username. Free to a good home. Uh, the the. Like, like, what I was gonna say is though, I'm fully back on board with Chipotle now. Natalie and I got Chipotle for for dinner last night. Wow. I'm fucking nice. fully, the the app is great. The app is not crap. I didn't actually try the mixed app. Um, but the app is great, and it's uh, it, it, I think their food is they've upped the quality level. Chipotle is a great Ch Mitch. Chipotle is like a great example of like, hey, this is a non heavy lunch that's a little bit more flavorful. I think it's mix. I think it's Golden Play Club. Sure, if you get a burrito, you're gonna get the burrito bomb going. Sure, yeah. You know, I think I think I think you can do all right with the bowl. Uh, well, hey, that was our review of Mixed. It's time for a segment. Actually, going to pop out real quick. You know, even more than just uh, Mixed reviews, I'd say Mixed to maybe just poor reviews of, of Mixed. Well, I think a two and a half is Mixed. Yeah, is, I guess is it mixed is Mixed. Review. I think right in, right in the middle. Uh, it's not Mixed proper in the sense that, like, like it's not like Weiger gave it a four and you gave it a one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mid, is, as the kids say. Mid. <laughs> mid is the Mid is a word. Mid's the, mid is mid is the word. Mid's the word. Mid mid's is the, the new word. word that people, mid uh, uh, HWG. Here we go. Yeah, that's something. Rochelle knows about that. Rochelle and I were we were bonding earlier that we we were we we're both part of a, a now defunct um, uh, editing collective uh, called Racer Trash. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, and so you're you guys are all you're you're you know the you know all the say as an editor you hear all the. I as a, I'm not a, I'm not like a terribly online person, yeah. you know, uh, and I'm not terribly young either. But I learned a lot of these phrases through there, you know. The, the... I was just thinking this the other day. I'm like DVR, which is, <laughs> by the way, not new. <laughs> but I was just like, oh, does so many people like DVR that instead? Like tape that doesn't make exactly. any sense anymore. Yes, DVR is the new. Uh... Is that it? But is 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 it even DVR that any is DVR antiquated? I is like my question at this point or. I don't think DVR is a brand name, so I think DVR is like the like uh, it's not like saying Kleenex or whatever. I, th okay. I think DVR is the ne just the name of the device, right? We're saying how you say DVR. We're still Ooh, recording, by the way. We're right. saying how DVR it is kind of like is like the new tape it. You know what I'm saying? It was. It used to be people used to say TiVo. TiVo is the brand. TiVo. Yeah. Oh. TiVo. It. Are you gonna TiVo that? Gonna um, TiVo. So so uh, we've got a segment here. Uh, our oh, our Amelia's producer coming. Amelia Marino stepping I'm in. Amelia. So Amelia. Also, I gotta give Amelia credit before the recording. You're like, you want to come in for it? And she's like, no. She's like, no. Nah. Yes. I got other shit to do. <laughs> Smart move, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> Rochelle's been sitting here just having to endure all this bullshit. <laughs> um, Amelia picked up our mixed for us, and I'm curious your take on mixed. But also, you told us something insane about your family that <laughs> I, I like. Uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta address. I feel like we gotta <laughs> we just gotta talk about this on the podcast. Uh, so we we're we we're just chatting about lunch. Yeah. And Ryan, you brought up how uh, it's important it is to get sunlight every day. And um, it reminded me of how my dad, Scorpion, uh, says that you need te you need to stare at the sun for 10 seconds every day directly at the sun. Uh, yeah. You need to get your 10 seconds in every yeah. single day. Yes. So <laughs> within this story, you also bring up another thing. Your dad... He goes by Scorpion. He yes, your dad is named Scorpion. Scorpion. Yeah. He came home one day from Atlantic City and was and had this giant scorpion tattoo on his hand and forearm. And he was like, I go by Scorpion now. <laughs> so we, we just as a family had to accept that. So now he's he's Scorpion. I don't even call him dad. I call him Scorpion. That's You have him saved as Scorpion in your phone. In my phone. We yeah. love this very much. We love this. What is his, uh, his first name? His first name's Leonard, Lenny. Oh, wow, so we went from Lenny to Scorpion. That's yeah. an upgrade. Yeah. That is an upgrade. That's, yeah. that's, upgrade. Yeah. that's an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. You also told the story where you got him a bidet. Yeah, so for Father's Day, I got him a, a bidet, and 
Uh, within minutes of him opening it, I got a, a video back from him. He he was using it as a toothbrush, <laughs> or like he was using it. <laughs> he was using the bidet to brush his teeth. <laughs> like not not hooked into the toilet? Was he just... No, he was hooked up to the toilet. <laughs> oh I'm hoping God. this is its first use. I really hope that he didn't use it. <laughs> I so he he's like, I'm about to use the bidet. And I'm expecting him it to be like a reaction video of yeah. him using it, but instead the water shoots up into his face and he starts brushing his teeth. And he's like, oh, <laughs> love it, thanks Amelia. <laughs> and that's not even the weirdest bidet story I got from I him. Do, I do, you, didn't, you didn't want to tell us the weirder one because we were eating. You but. guys were eating, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he was, whatever. Um, we can edit it out if you want. Okay, um, <laughs> he's not gonna, he's never gonna listen to this. Uh, he, uh, hey. <laughs> I got, <laughs> he got things to do. He's yeah. fucking Scorpion. Is Scorpion's gonna listen to this podcast. I mean, his daughter doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> right, okay. You, you, you honestly, you could have worked if you wanted silence. You could have just worked in here next to Rochelle. <laughs> you would, there would have been no noise. Uh, but let's hear this dirty. Um, about maybe like a week after Father's Day, I get I get a a text that's like, "Have you ever filled up your small intestine with the with the bidet before?" Oh my god! I was like, I was like, no, I haven't tried this. Uh, what? What's the process? You just relax and you just let the water build up, fill up your small intestine, <laughs> and you know it's euphoric. God. <laughs> I'm getting one. I'm sold. I'm sold. I never thought of it. Like Scorpio, I have done that. Yeah, I, I said the wise. I put the pressure up. I've said this on the podcast where I could feel it on the back of my teeth, basically. Like once Whoa. you once you once you get into once you get into once you get into the bidet world and you get used to it, you're like you you wanna you wanna you wanna you wanna feel clean. You yeah, wanna but experiment. I, yeah. I don't I don't ever reach the point where I'm like holding an excess of water inside of me. Like it's always still kind of like, you know, cleaning the surface. Mm -hmm. Do you have a bidet? Yeah, I got a bidet. Okay. Big time bidet. Do you have a tushy? I've got a Toto uh, seat. It's one of those seats oh. you attach. It's got like a, it's 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 like warmed and uh, it's very Am nice. I the only bidet-less person in this building? You gotta get a bidet. You need one. If any uh, if any uh, bidets want to sponsor the podcast, this is a good time to reach out. <laughs> I'd love to do some bidet ad <laughs> Bidet day so. here on And also, by the way, gold mine for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to think about like, which podcast listeners shit the most? <laughs> I think the Doughboys <laughs> listeners are probably up there. Mm, but are they dirty, stinky shit? Oh, oh, oh. oh you, you have gotta no get idea. One. You gotta. Um, Amelia, thank you so much I was for trying your to help. Think of like, Thanks for having I've me I've seen on. the rain down in Africa. I was trying to think of a bidet parody for it, but I couldn't do it quick enough. I just want to let okay. her know. It's a lovely bidet. <laughs> <laughs> lovely bidet. Love that bidet. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Amelia. Are you thanks, leaving? Man. I mean, you can stick well, around. Like. I mean, like said, thanks, Amelia. It oh. kind of sounded like a segue. No, out, he does so. stuff like that. No, it's fine. You can stay for the for <laughs> yeah, the okay. stay if you want. I mean, I thought you, you have work to do, so I thought you could. That's, yeah, it's fine. Out. Okay, all right, great. Amelia's gonna hang out. Yeah, she was lying to us, and she's. Out. <laughs> 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 I don't want to be in here. <laughs> all right, so look, it's 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 a uh, we're back in studio. Uh, it's the return of a segment that we used to do all the time here on the podcast. I've got a mystery beverage, and Mitch and Perez must guess what it is. It's the return of the Weiger Challenge. I'm giving mm. little sniffs. Do you, so, remember, do you remember that I won this a long time ago? Yeah, you yeah. won, you won you, the I Weiger think you were Challenge. The, were you the first person to, you might have been the first person to beat me. You might have been correct? the first person to beat like Mitch. Yeah. Yeah. I, think yeah. you, I think you were, because I was pretty good at Mitch the Weiger Challenge. Mitch is great at the Weiger Challenge. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm smelling it right now. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, getting some a citrusy smell. Des on. And describe like if you if you can, you get these in plastic cups. But for the listeners who aren't watching the video, what are we dealing with here? Like, we got some. We got some clear. This is a clear beverage mm, here. Not clear. super clear. There's yeah. a little cloud. Yeah, a little, little bit cloudy. of cloudy. Looks like maybe a little bit like a Weiger load. <laughs> um, uh, a citrusy smell. Perez, you sm I'm trying to. It's almost grapefruit adjacent. It's it's yeah. It, um. Mm. Uh, I don't. I've, I I kind of lost my smell uh, since having COVID uh, yesterday. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> in studio but, now. Uh, <laughs> Let's see here. I'm gonna. Can we can we take a sip, Wags? Of course. It's part of the exercise. Okay. I have. This a, is like a, a, this a is like a familiar. This is like a familiar taste. 
I think I have a theory too. I think I wow. I think Familiar? I... Maybe it is a Weiger load. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God! You talk that way to Scorpion. <laughs> she's got that Scorpion sting, Amelia. I knew she had the sting as soon as I saw her. I knew she's because she's you know it's like the old thing. It's in her nature, you know. She's gonna, you know. It's I just I like it's a testament to how little respect the two of us yes. command yeah. that <laughs> we're still in the early days of relative early days of Amelia's uh, employment. She roasts us endlessly. Yes. It's been a year. Emma, that's, that's true. Yeah. yeah, it's it flew by. Emma as well. Emma roasts us more than anyone. Yes. <laughs> Emma basically threatens to send us to our rooms. <laughs> um, I, I have I have a theory on what this is. I have, 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 a, I have a slight theory on what this, what this is. Wow. Should I, should I just go for it? You are you going Benoit Blank on me? I, I, I kind of, I, I, I think that I. Benoit Mom may have this. some suspicions <laughs> about uh, this here beverage. A glass <laughs> onion. Uh, <laughs> keep doing that for two and a half, quarter hours, and you got, <laughs> you got a knives out picture. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. Mitch just finished it? No, I just, I just, and I completely changed what I think it is. Wow. I think that this is a G2, a diet Gatorade uh, white cherry. It's a white cherry Gatorade. White cherry Gatorade. Mm-hmm. Mitch's guess. Perez, you got an idea? I like, I, I do like the Gatorade thing, but I made my, um, I, I actually wrote it Gatorade down. Gatorade with- Zero ice cherry or or, or, or frosted cherry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Ice cherry, fro- frosted cherry. Uh, I, I'm going to go with, a, this is some, I don't know what, what varietal, but I believe this is a diet Hawaiian punch of some kind. Wow. I, you know, I was, I was closest, when I first was drinking, I was like, is this a diet squirt? And then it just popped in my head, this is a G, G0 uh, cherry ice. Mitch, your instincts to change your answer were dead on because although it is not a Gatorade, it is a Powerade, wow. zero sugar, white cherry. Oh my wow. God. So Mitch, you have won the Weiger Challenge, which means you get the rest of the bottle. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I think both Perez and I can agree. Not the best. <laughs> How, why is Powerade so much worse than Gatorade? You know what? The zero sugar one is because at first I uh, like I was like there is a taste of diet to this, yeah. but also I I wasn't positive it was diet. So I can taste that diet. I don't eat I don't uh, eat or drink I don't eat diet beverages for sure. I I don't drink them uh, because um, I can't stand that aspartame taste. Yeah, I, I'm uh, with I'm you. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not on board. I'm not I'm not I'm not on board. Amelia, what's your? Do you do sports drinks and do you do diet drinks? No, to both. Wow. I I also don't like the taste of aspartame. Um, it's bad. Yeah, I, I don't like soda in general. Um, hmm, I don't like soda. Yeah, I I just never grew up drinking it, and I think I just never developed a taste for it. Yeah. The only carbonated drink I do like is Liquid Death. Wow. That's the wow. only carbonated drink mm, I like. Like a scorpion. Yeah, that's a scorpion beverage. It's a scorpion sting. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that was the Weiger challenge. Mitch wins again. Congratulations. Just like I had, restaurant- back. I had to get the throne back. Exactly. Me. You've you've won back from <laughs> me I'm, I'm, specifically. That's... There's, Love to have the rubber match. Wow. <laughs> Complete the trilogy. Uh, just like a restaurant value feedback, let's open the feedback. And we have a voicemail today, which Emma is going to play for us. Amelia, I don't know if you have headphones. Oh, I do right here. Hey, Doe Boys. My name is Walter, Walter K93 in the Doe Scored. Um, I recently moved to New Jersey, and I realized around here a lot of um, like restaurant workers, service workers in general will usually like default give you a nickname like boss or buddy or my friend or something. Um, I think it's a way to just be nice, but also maybe a way to like avoid Karen-ish behavior. (laughs) But my question for you all is, if you were um, in their position, what would be your go-to nickname for people that came into your uh, store? Thanks, and um, thanks for everyone's work on the show. Bye-bye. Thanks, Walter. Why did I get the vibe that that was uh, recorded at a funeral home? (laughs) (laughs) Walter... He, he sounds like a very nice guy. He sounds a little bit like when Zodiac calls into the radio station <laughs> <laughs> and wants to talk to a yeah. Brian Cox in yeah. a movie. Anyway, uh, thanks, Doughboys. I got to go bury my dad. <laughs> Dear God. So uh, th- this, uh, this is a, an easy answer for me, which is buddy. This is a, hey, buddy. I'm going to be calling people buddy. That's yeah, what I'm calling buddy people. is. But 
the as far as what I like to hear, I love hearing boss or boss man. It's like, hey, boss man. Don't love hearing big guy, which I'll get a, a fair amount. Yeah, I get big guy. Don't a like lot. a big guy, uh, but I like a boss. I like a boss man. I like a chief. What about big man? You don't like that? I mean, I'm okay it, with big man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why a big man is better than big guy. Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I like big man better than big guy. Maybe because it's like it's like oh you're a man you know like a, sure maybe yeah. that's it's some some sort of a I don't know. I also like like a a my friend sure. And then if we're go, if we're like go to waitress category like a darling, like a darling yeah. or a or a sweetie. Sweetie's nice. Yeah, too. it's a lot of fun. But then I'm also like I love her. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I call my waitress mom. Damn it. <laughs> You're getting 40%. <laughs> Remember me. It was cool how you like sat down in the booth next to me to take my order. Those those rad. There is there are certain waitresses that like probably like a like a gambling addict in Vegas just giving her like 60% tip. Like yeah. I love you, ma'am. <laughs> oh, you don't Who have to be you? a gambling addict. You just uh, no, I've done it. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, 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 uh, sweetie is, I think that that's nice when people call me sweetie. I think for me, I would go maybe like, you know, what's fun is like, what's up my man? Like, that's yeah, kind of that's good. It's a good one. But uh, I also feel dorky saying it. Like, I, I don't think I can get away with it, but, uh, I, I wish there was a better, like gender neutral option. That's mm, a big issue. That's a good there point. isn't like a, yeah, yeah. a great, like just kind of catch all. Yeah, I can't say I've ever gotten a, a boss. No one's ever right. called me boss or <laughs> chief or uh, you're yeah. a little scorpion. Yeah, li- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and and sir is feels so different than ma'am. Mm. Like like I know like a lot of uh, uh, you know women don't like ma'am, but sir I feel like as always feels respectful. I think I just start probably saying like, "Hey there, how you doing?" I think that's a like that's what I would probably do. Is hey yeah. there, how you doing? Yeah. This is this is if you were the server. Or if you're that, yeah, you're in that position. Oh, if you're the server, I always I always like a friend or a friend's a, good. A, a, yeah, boss. I I wouldn't do boss or big guy or anything like that. Um, I sir is a bit tricky because I don't. When an older person calls me sir, it, I can't stand it. Yeah. If an older, if an older man yeah. calls me sir, it feels the, like the universe is upside down. Yeah, I don't like that. That's I, I um, get that. I have a gender neutral one that I think I, that would work. Hi there, sweet cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> it works both yeah. ways. <laughs> yeah, if you're Charlie Rose, that's great. <laughs> uh, Emma, Mila, you got to, well, Emma, you worked in food service for a while. You were a bartender. Thank you for your service. Uh, did, what, did you have a go-to? In Boston, too. Yeah. Uh, we so actually... probably like, get the fucking back up, fucking <laughs> hey, asshole. Motherfucker. Mother- <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker is gender neutral. You can use that for anybody. Um, <laughs> but we actually, we had training where we were told not to use gender specific terms. And that's partially why I use the term y'all. I'm like not Southern oh, at all, good. but I use the term uh, y'all all the time. Just you know like, what? hey y'all, what's up? And it works for that's everybody. Funny you, it's funny you say that because I feel like I hear y'all a lot. Like, yeah. What can I get y'all? It really and you're, it, well. Instead of yeah, saying you guys or ladies or gentlemen, yeah. whatever, just say, hey y'all, what's up? And it just, you can just keep moving through. <laughs> See, they're way ahead out there in the South. Yeah, the way ahead. <laughs> they know. They're so progressive. The future down there. <laughs> Elon would hate this convo. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking loser. <laughs> everyone tries to like, like, uh, look, I hate Trump, obviously. I don't like sure. Trump. But everyone tries to act like they have like the juice that Trump has yeah. or had. And they're all dorks. No, None they, of them yeah. have that mm, juice. It seems sweaty. I like will admit that Trump had that. It was scary and it was evil. But he had that juice, and these other guys yeah. don't have that juice. Yeah. Genu- genuine charisma, and was able to like come across as like funny in a way that these again a, a piece of shit, but a funny in a way that the other people who yeah, she read something and be like, oh my, you like you'd be like, oh my fucking, God. like you would yeah. be laughing at yes. how awful it's, it's it was. The, yeah. It's the grotesque. It's yes. the, the 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 mirroring of of horror and comedy. It's and like, Elon's the, like Nosferatu. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah, making a fucking pronouns joke is just so sweaty. It's just fucking like, oh, this loser. Sucks. But but that is that's a great point that I that th- thinking about about and, and, that, and that, now when I'm thinking about it, like like you're saying, like I do get big guy or, or big man a lot. Mm-hmm. I get like specific. Uh, yeah. But... Would you prefer small fry? <laughs> you get small fry? <laughs> no. But <laughs> you know what? Like, Wise can attest to this. As a big guy, you do get that. Yeah. And then that's like the meanest one. Uh huh. Like Tiny. that's the one I don't when you're like. 
like a like hey like little guy or whatever. Hey there, like, Slim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's that's that one's that sucks. Yes. If I get called Slim, I'm mad. There's never there's never a scenario where someone has called me Slim, and I'm happy about it. But I but like a gender neutral thing. I think what Emma's saying is like y'all are like hi. What can I get? Yes, you? The, y- y'all y'all is perfect. Amelia, you got an answer? A go to here? Um, I think nothing's better than an a sweet older lady calling you sweetheart or honey. Yes, those are good ones. Um, <laughs> They're really good. Yeah, but I don't think I would like that coming from a guy. Yeah, those are it's very circumstantial. Um, oh, to Wags and I. <laughs> <laughs> um. Mitch, I was thinking about like your a dog biting your dick, which I don't think Amelia heard because <laughs> you weren't in the studio. Mm-hmm. But my 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 thought I had was, what do you think the dog whisperer would say if you were like, "Hey, Caesar a dog, Milan, yeah, a dog bit my dick." <laughs> do you think he'd be like, "You got to bite the dog's dick back," <laughs> <laughs> otherwise he won't respect you. It was a lady dog. Oh boy, so I guess I gotta. <laughs> Go down on the dog. <laughs> the rules. So that was the only way to do yeah. it. The only way to do it. It's good for the goose. It's good for the gander. <laughs> if you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830-GO-DO. That's 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double Our Weekly Bonus episode, you can join the Golden or Platinum Play Club at patreon.com slash doughboys. And hey, check out Doughboys Snack Pack on Spotify Live. Hang out and chat with us every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Listen live nope. on Spotify. Nope. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, was oh, it, yeah. These are old notes? Nope. Yeah, it's still in my copy. I guess it's not really relevant anymore. I can probably delete that. <laughs> <laughs> guess we won't be hanging out with everyone on Spotify Live on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern anymore. You know, technically, we're if we were going by our first contract, we are still in the 30. We're still in the 30-week 30 30 window. We're still in the 30-week window. <laughs> so right. maybe you should just say that until it's okay, until the 30-week window is yeah. over. Anyways. Uh, Ryan Prez. Thank you so much for yes. joining us. Thank you so One much of, for uh, having it, me. It's been too long. We'll have you back sooner rather than a later. Thrilled to be back. Yeah. D- delightful guest to have back in studio. Uh, anything you'd like to, to plug at this time? Uh, I have a few plugs. I uh, I uh, have this show, Mama Needs a Movie. I host, co-host with my friend Ann Riemann, and we uh, talk about movies. Very analytical discussions. Mitch was on recently. I was on there. It was a blast. Uh, Weiger, your, your invite is coming Q1 2023. I love it. Uh, oh. I'm also, uh, I'm, uh, this season on, uh, HBO, uh, uh I'm, uh, Josh Gad's understudy on Avenue five. Wow. It's rare, rare TV show with an understudy. Uh, I'm working with Roku. <laughs> I appear in uh, Roku city, uh, on the screensaver. I'm the little guy who waves from one of the apartment windows. <laughs> um, I'm, ex- I'm partnering with the 15 to 17, uh, to Paris guys. And we're going to just ride around on trains until one gets hijacked again. And they make another movie. About it. <laughs> I get the. Right, so I'm doing exciting work with David Zaslav of HBO. We're developing a Roger Rabbit type dip that erases the cartoons even before they're drawn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing the book, the book for the Broadway production of uh, Netflix's Tall Girl, <laughs> and it's going to be one of those Julie Taymor type shows with the big puppets. Uh, I'm appearing in a Zoom cameo for the official music video of George Harrison's "Isn't It a Pity." <laughs> it's going to be shot all, here all around Silver Lake. My I'm, my cameo will be done by Zoom, though. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to also my last project. I'm going to reveal a little it. more about myself. A year old. <laughs> a personal a personal tale that I'm bringing to the small screen. It's a prestige show. It's about what it's like to have too high tea. Uh, and it's a, it is about my illness of having a very, very high tea, wow. <laughs> kicking around titles, too much tea, high tea, tea time, something like that. But that's just a few things I'm working on. Wow. Uh, look for all of that. <clears throat> and, uh, Hey, oh, and I also want to thank, uh, yeah. Rochelle here at Headgum for helping I'm us out. I'm just sad I'll never get a guest, I can never have a guest star on that high tea show. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, before guy. Uh, <laughs> Fair. Until, hey, until next time for the Spoon Bag by Patrol, Nick Quagger. Happy eating. See ya. Want more Doughboys? Check out the Dough Scored, our Discord server. Get access to that and the Doughboys Double over at patreon.com slash doughboys. Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast.